decision to appeal for more money. The letter says the Academy is no longer able to cover the full costs of extracurricular clubs as well as creative activities such as music, drama and sports, along with the use of the minibus. The Academy says the contributions are voluntary and are in line with the vast majority of schools. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. The Point was built in 1985 and was one of the first multiplex cinemas in the UK. President Obama and Putin have spoken to each other in a phone call as efforts continue to defuse the crisis in Ukraine's Crimea region. The West has condemned a vote held by the Crimean Parliament yesterday to join the Russian Federation. A builder from Aylesbury who conned a vulnerable widow out of half a million pounds has been caught after going on the run. John Jenkins has now had an extra two weeks added to his six-year sentence for fraud. He took two overdoses whilst on the run and was arrested in hospital. A huge amount of waste has been found dumped inside an empty warehouse in Bedfordshire. The fly tippers cut a lorry-sized hole in the side of the building in Dunstable to get in. More from Lee Agnew. The Environment Agency says that over four days last November, a Around 3,000 cubic metres of waste was dumped illegally inside the warehouse on the former Eco Mould site along Luton Road. It's left the landowner with a huge bill to get it removed. Officers are now appealing for witnesses as the waste must have been taken to the site in large vehicles and machinery must have been used to gain access to the building. Several high-profile court cases, including the trial of publicity guru Max Clifford for sexual offences, have had to be taken unscheduled day off today because of a walkout by lawyers. The barristers and solicitors are angry at cuts made to the legal aid budget. In sport, Dean Bowditch could return to the MK Don squad for tomorrow's trip to Swindon, but Luton will be without Luke Guttridge for the away game at Salisbury. The weather, cloudy with a chance of some patchy light rain this morning, but sunnier this afternoon, a maximum temperature 14 degrees Celsius, and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. There's a great community spirit with uh, the people here. I like the parks, I love going around the parks. Inviting everyone to where you live. It's a great place to get out and about, go for a walk, you're so near to the countryside. And all this week, we're featuring Kempston. It's nice and compact, it has a little bit of everything in here. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Drugs, prostitution... We made it. It looks like we made it once again. It's Friday. Get in the sun. Get here. This is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. It's four minutes past six. It's Friday. And boy, oh boy, have we got, well, some stuff for you. Have we got stuff? Victory for Beth Warren. A letter home for Barton parents, and the end is nigh for the Milton Keynes Point. They've listened to me, they've listened to common sense. The point is being ripped down. And I shall be there. I'm going to climb atop the point of the point, waving a flag. I don't know what flag it's going to be yet. I'm open to offers. And then I'm going to rip it down piece by piece with my bare hands. I think that's what's happening. Butch. Yeah, very butch indeed. Butch. One word you could use to describe me today is butch. Kelly, you had a different suggestion? It wasn't for broadcast. OK, thank you. Non-broadcast purposes. Broadcast only words will be used today. If you want to get in touch, forget the internet, it's rubbish. Phones, telephones, or as they say in a foreign country, telefono. 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. I turned the microphone on because I was doing a good, good speech then, but the microphone wasn't on. Only I heard it in my head. You may not be able to buy, love. Echo. You want some echo on this, do you? Okay, 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 okay. You, when I've said what I'm about to say, you might think. Right, okay. You may not be able to buy, love, but you can certainly win it in a court of law. Oh, whoa, hang on. Sorry? Re- retract. What, what? Retract. But she won it in a court she of law. Bought, she bought time, is what she bought. But the song is Can't Buy Me Love. All right, go on then. But you can buy time. But what that? But then that's... It doesn't... You may... Oh, it doesn't work now. Can't buy me love. love. Money. 
Here comes, here comes, here comes. The introduction to that song was a ham-fisted and probably very uh, unsophisticated way of linking into my next story. A Newport Pagnell woman has won her fight for more time to decide whether to have her late husband's children. We talked about this yesterday. Warren Brewer put a sample of his sperm into storage before beginning cancer treatment back in 2005. His wife, Beth, argued he'd done everything he could to ensure she could use it as and when she felt ready. But the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority had different ideas. Is. Well, our reporter Ben Nye has been looking into this. Ben, uh, that, that sample was due to be destroyed of April next year. Remind us why. That's right. Um, well, it's because of the HFEA's current rules on storage. It means that a sample can be stored for a maximum of 10 years unless the donor signs extra forms. However, Beth's argument was always that her husband had signed everything he, he had been offered. Um, let's remember that when Warren gave that sample back in 2005, it was in case he became infertile. Neither he nor Beth thought he would die at that stage and it was a case of kind of making provision for a family they thought they would raise together at some point in the future. As time went by it became apparent that this wasn't how it was going to pan out at which point Beth says Warren did everything he could to make sure the sample would be available to her if and when she was ready. Mm -hmm. Yesterday's ruling does mean that the sample can be kept now for the maximum amount of time, the the full time scale, uh, 55 years, so that'll be up in 2060. Now, it's been a very unusual story that we've covered a lot, and it it certainly has provoked an emotional response, hasn't it? It has, and, and it's opened Beth's personal life up for comment from people who don't necessarily agree with her choices. Um, She's found it hard, but ultimately she's trying to go through with the wishes she discussed with her husband before he died. Of course it's difficult, and I think if I wasn't in this situation I couldn't understand it, but when you love someone and you made plans to spend the rest of your life with them, you made plans to have children, but you also made plans of what would happen if one of you wasn't around. It's something that we discussed. And ultimately, if he wasn't happy, I would never be fighting for this. But he was. And I know it's not ideal that child wouldn't have their father, but so many children don't have great upbringings with parents that aren't very supportive, choose not to be around. And that child would be in a very supportive family with a lot of photos, memories, stories of their dad. And there has been a great deal of support, uh, sympathy for for Beth as well. Um, The judge said that he had great sympathy for her and added that ultimately, whatever her decision may be, I wish her and the family much happiness after such a difficult and sad time. What does this mean for Beth now? Well, it it appeared to be good news at first. Uh, Before this decision, she was staring down the barrel of her husband's sperm being destroyed by next year. That severely limited her options, particularly as she'd admitted to not feeling entirely ready to start a family at this stage in her life. This decision gives her that little bit more time to decide when or if she may feel ready to have a child. 
However, this is by no means over. Uh, the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority has been given permission by the judge, Mrs Justice Hogg, mm. to appeal the decision. And the HFEA officials have until mid-March to decide whether they lodge an appeal. The HFEA does say that this case may have implications for other cases in which case uh, sorry other cases in which the sperm provider's wishes are less clear uh, it means that beth still faces a further fight to keep the sperm which she admitted has been difficult i think it's certainly not helping me move on because everything's so tied up together from when i lost my brother my husband mm. and now this i want to be putting this to the past and moving on to the future and building a new future and when you're fighting for the past it's it's really difficult to do that and I think we're hearing from Beth later on in the programme, aren't we, Ben? We are indeed, yeah. Brilliant. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much indeed. 08459 455 555 is the uh, telephone number. If you want to give us a, a call on that or any of the other stories that we're talking about this morning, I'm trying to find a song to play. And do you know what? I think I've just found one. <laughs> Not, not been a flirting. Rude boy. They're shouting "rude boy" at the end of that. Isn't that a, isn't that a good song? I should have not been a flirting. Rude boy. <laughs> Very rude boy. It would appear. Very rude boy indeed. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. In Bricketwood, the North Orbital already looking heavy at the M25 Junction 21A roundabout. Otherwise, major routes looking good at the moment. We do still have some road closures, though, after problems with flooding. In Hemel Hempstead, Longcroft Lane is closed between Flounden Lane and Chipperfield Road for emergency repairs. And in Cotterwood, Warren Lane is closed around Spring Lane. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. 6.15, it's Friday. Yes. The 7th of March, I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes 
is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be de- not demolished. And in sport, Dean Bowditch could return. Bowditch? Will we say Bowditch? 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 Bowditch, I think. Bowditch? Yeah. What would, you, would you say Bowditch? I would. Dean Bowditch could return to the MK Don squad for tomorrow's trip to Swindon, but Luton will be without Luke Guttridge for the away game at Salisbury. BBC Three Counties Radio. BBC Three Counties Radio's Big Tour. This afternoon, as part of our big tour of Beds, Hearts and Bucks, I'll be in the Bedfordshire town of Kempston. Nick Coffer. I'm going to meet local people while I'm based at the Community Centre, Project 229. The Big Tour of Beds, Hearts and Bucks. Plus, I'll bring you all the history from the town and what the residents have planned for the future. All this week, we're featuring Kempston. Feel free to come down and say hello at the Community Centre, Project 229. Nick Coffer. Today, from midday here on BBC Three Counties Radio. Who was the... uh, We spoke to a gentleman, didn't we, who was a passionate, very passionate defender of the point. Paul Bartlett. Are we speaking to him later on? It'd be great to get his uh, opinion. Now we know the point is going to be ripped down piece by piece. He'll be getting a phone call, which he may accept or decline. I'm hoping he will accept it, because he was uh, a thoroughly excellent talker on the subject of the point. It's official, kids. The point is being taken down. uh, uh, There is no point in the point. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, it's being taken down. They've listened to reason. It, it looked great when it was built, and then about five years later, it didn't look great. 08459 oh, four double five five double five. Are you excited, Steve the Milkman, that the point's being ripped down? Uh, we no. Oh, OK. What did you call in about? Uh, this, this lady with her husband's... Sperm stuff. We can say sperm stuff, yes. yes. It's a lat- Latin term. OK. Do, do we know uh, how much it's going to cost me to keep it... Um, I don't think it's up for sale. Or... I don't think it's up for sale, Steve. You might confuse it with your other products. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, do, do, uh, how much is it going to cost a week to keep it going? Do, do we know? Does anybody know? Has any, any idea? Does it, right, the question is, how much is it going to cost a week to keep it going? You mean f- it frozen? <laughs> A bit frozen, yeah. I don't know. Why are you so concerned? Well, it seems a bit silly. If she's going to keep that for how many odd odd years, yeah. and it's going to cost so many nurses a, a year, then doesn't use it. I just seems like. What do you mean it's going to cost? A co- waste of a nurse, Steve. <laughs> normally, I, normally you talk sense, Steve. If I'm honest, you're talking right out of your bum this morning. If it's going to cost a, how many nurses? Well, yeah, because the, the money's got to come from somewhere, and the, the, the NHS is getting cut and cut and cut and cut. So and if cut. that's going to, it's going to, yeah, and cut again. Yeah. So the, where's this money going to come from? And if the money's not used to frozen that, surely that could be used for something else. I, I mean, I don't know. It no, may, no, I can be... tell you don't know, Steve. You're, you're literally plucking words out of your hair, for goodness sake. I tell you what, Steve. I haven't got any hair. Oh, God, blimey. I will, uh, when Beth comes on... I will put that question to her. She may not know. It can't cost that much, though. You just put it in the back of the freezer next to the Hagen dass and the fish fingers, don't you? Well, I wouldn't put it near the Hagen dass because it might get... Um... Here we go. Thank you very much indeed. Steve, Steve, uh, Steve quite often talks sense. He's talking guff this morning. It's going to cost nurses. Nurses aren't going to l- lose their jobs because um, some sperm is being frozen, unless, of course, they're doing it without uh, the permission of the hospital. Then uh, they rightfully should face disciplinary action. But it, it can't cost that much, can it? No, I shouldn't think so. Justin, any idea how much it costs to freeze sperm? Uh, no idea, boss, but I can try and find out for you. Would you be able to? <laughs> I'll try. It's already in there, isn't it? It's just a matter of not moving in the jar. Yeah, I would have thought so. Is it in the jar? I sort of canister, I'd imagine. I've thought, I see, I've got a test in my head. It's a test tube with a cork in the top. No, that'd smash, wouldn't it? Yeah. Frost damage. What would you, what would you, what are you imagining it's kept in, Justin? I think it'll be frozen somewhere in a test tube. I, I would have thought. That, that, that's just my initial thought. A test tube with a cork in the top? Yeah. No, one of those possibly. canisters with all the um, swirling mist <laughs> around it. Yeah. What do you think it's kept in, Kelly? Like a little round pellet thing, and this has got a little house a- in there. That's maybe what Steve's confused about. He thinks it needs to pay rent. A pellet what? thing with a house in there? Yeah. You know, one of those round. Do you mean a petri dish? No. A pellet with a house in? What? I don't even know what that means. Wow. She's been on this strong coffee. I, I, I think we need another one to try and bring us down a bit. That was the argument back in the day. Let's see what happens. Kelly, thank you. Justin, what, what do you want? 
Well, I'm here I, talking about your next story. Well, boss. I tell you what, before we do that, would you like to... Because you do... Not many people know this. Mm, mm. I've seen the figures, and I, literally not yes. many people know this. Yeah. You do a music show on Saturdays between 9 and 12. I do. Um, I, 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 unfortunately, I'm not able to listen then. Um, who have you got on this week? We have a legend on this week. Yeah. Eddie Reader. Oh, I like Fairground him. He's good. And she will be Yeah, we're gonna rock acapella. down to Electric Avenue. <laughs> and then we'll take it higher. No, not Eddie Grant. Eddie Reader. Eddie Reader on him. the show tomorrow from I, Fairground Attraction. She's I, perfect. Come on. Well, listen. Show us how good you are. The next track, it's a classic. We're probably mm. probably not allowed to play it because of the PC Brigade. Okay. What's the track? Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves oh. by Share in Your Face. Political correctness. Justin, would you like to introduce it for me, please, sir? How many seconds? You've got eight seconds. Eight your time seconds. starts now. Here we go. Here is an absolute classic from Cher. She is still absolutely stunning. Forget the plastic surgery. Here we go. Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves. Oh, he's, he's good. Born in the wagon of a traveling show. My mama used to dance for the money they'd throw. Mama would do whatever he could. Read your little gospel. Sell a couple bottles of dark. Money down. I never had schooling, but it taught me well with its smooth southern style. Three months later, I'm a gal in trouble, and I haven't seen him for a while. Oh, I haven't seen him for a while. Oh, she was born in the wagon of a traveling show. Come on, guys. Come on. Oh, you can't say that now, Justin. You can't say gypsies, tramps and thieves. Oh, you can, Joe. You've just done it. I've I've done it, I know, but there'll be letters of complaint, Justin. Political correctness gone mad, Justin. Not when you're talking about a US number one like that, my friend. That is a great record, isn't it? It is a great record. And Sherry's 86 years old and she she is still hot to trot. I like her, seriously. I, I still l- quite fancy her. I, no, I do. I, mm. I totally do. You know, if Cher, Cher, if you're listening, I know she's a big fan. I think. Mm. Doesn't she live in Bedford? Um, I thought it was Kempston. Mate, somewhere. It's, it's yeah, one of the big tour this week. The big tour. It's one of both places. <laughs> no, you're mistaken if a Cher. Oh, oh, Cher lives there, doesn't she? Sure. Cher lives in, uh, in Hollywood. Now, listen, on to more serious things. Um, uh, well done, by the way, Justin. Uh, you were the only member of the team that dressed up for International Book Day yesterday. Mm, I know, thank you. You came as Stig of the Dump. Yeah. Now, anyone with children knows that schools are always out there asking for the old fiver here, a couple of quid there, book day, art materials or trips, or, or the privilege of Mufti Day. But parents of children at one Bedfordshire school have received letters to say changes to the way it's funded means it needs extra funding from them to cover the cost of extracurricular things like after-school clubs and creative and sporting opportunities. Justin, you've been uh, looking into this for us. How, mm. how much are the school asking for? Well, the parents have been asked to make a voluntary donation of £20 per pupil and a maximum donation of £40 per family. Now, the head says this is a one-off lump sum uh, to avoid the constant trickle of requests that mums and dads tend to get in the course of the school year. Now, the school's really keen to point this out, Ian, that these donations, they are completely voluntary 
voluntary and no child there will be disadvantage if their parents don't make any contribution. Uh, th- 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 that's correct. They are pointing that out, although I, I, I have heard from a reliable source that you are asked to put the child's name either on the back of the uh, cheque or on the envelope that the cheque is kept. Why do yeah. they need that information? Exactly. It does sound, I, I guess, fairly reasonable, doesn't it? Well, we've had a statement from the head teacher, Steve Kelly, who says that, that what they're doing is in line with the vast majority of schools, but, but he doesn't mention something that caught our attention in the original letter which was sent to parents, which is this part. It says, for the past two years, we have not had to ask for additional financial support from parents as the school receives sufficient funds to cover the cost of these additional opportunities. However, due to changes in the way schools are now financed, we will no longer be able to cover the cost of our enrichment, extracurricular Mm. and creative opportunities. Therefore, it is necessary to be asking for your support once again. Make of that what you want. So what's changed then, Justin? Well, sadly, no one from Arnold wanted to discuss that with us on the programme this morning. Now, we're not saying this is the only school making this request in beds, hearts and bucks. In in what this letter was sent to parents, if it's true, um, we have no reason to believe otherwise. But there may be a, a fair few other schools doing exactly the same, asking for these extra donations. The anti-academy movement, who you're going to be talking to a bit later on, uh, they will tell you this is a, a sign the system is not doing everything it promised. But it would be interesting to, to hear from parents mm. this morning, not just in Bedfordshire, but, but across the three counties. Are they also being written to asking for these extra so-called voluntary donations? Well, let's put that out then. If you are, are a parent or a grandparent, you've got kids going to a school. Have you had a letter in the past six months, past year, asking for extra uh, voluntary donations to help top up the coffers a little bit? Nick or otherwise, 08459 double five five double five. Justin, just going off. Uh, uh, on a little side road, a cul-de-sac, if you don't mind. Mm. Uh, you're quite new to um, Twitter and things like that, aren't you? Yes. yes. What's, what's, what's your hashtag, your name on Twitter, your, your handle? It's at Justin Daly. And you really are doing some great tweets. Yeah. Uh, can I just warn you? Yeah, go on. Just be careful. Why? Just be careful on Twitter, Just. Why? Because if, if you start winding up people who are very, very powerful on Twitter, say somebody who's got, I don't know, 38.4 thousand uh, followers, 38,462, something like that, followers. Yeah. Just try not to antagonise them, because if that person were to direct... Let, let's call it 39,000. If that person were to direct those 39,000 followers towards you, your life could mm. become... Very, very uncomfortable. Hang on a second, just for my legal team. Uh, 6.28 on Friday. Um, threat oh. made live on oh, the radio. Oh, no, it's, yeah. not, it's not a threat, Justin. It's not a threat? No, that's a no. promise, mate. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting on the speed sensors in Beaconsfield, the Jill carriageway between the A40 and the M40 is busy heading to join the motorway. But the other major routes all looking good at the moment, the M25 and M1 flowing freely. We do still have some road closures, though, after problems with flooding. Entering the wharf lane is closed at Cow Roast. And public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties. Alice, I cut you off mid, mid flow there. I do apologise. Uh, 08459 four double five five double five. We're kind of having a relaxed Friday. If I'm honest, we don't have many what we call in radio world talking points. I haven't got many things to toss out to you to get your opinion on. I mean, we can talk about the point if you want, but what I'm saying is the phone lines are open. You can call in about any old thing you want to have a talk about. 08459 four double five five double five. I'm calling it a Friday natter. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 6.30, I'm Simon Oxley, a woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority has until mid-March to decide whether to appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. And David Cameron is in Bedfordshire this morning. The Prime Minister will be promoting the Help to Buy scheme. Downing Street says 375 people in Bedfordshire have bought a house through the scheme. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
Dean Bowditch could return to the MK Don squad for tomorrow's trip to Swindon with manager Carl Robinson promising changes to personnel and formation. Yeah, I'm looking to make two or three changes for Saturday. Um, I think some players need a rest, some players need to have a re- realisation of where they're at. Um, so there'll be some impact changes, yes. And uh, we do feel we're going to go there, we're going to change the shape. We're going to change one or two things to the shape, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to try and challenge Swindon in a different way. Also in League One, Stevenage face a key game in their battle against relegation as they host fellow strugglers Tranmere. Wickham skipper Stuart Lewis remains a down for the League Two match at home to Hartlepool as he continues his recovery from a hamstring problem. And conference leaders Luton will head to Salisbury tomorrow without Luke Guttridge. The midfielder was injured in last week's win over Alfreton. Manager John Still is waiting for a full diagnosis. Uh, Luke Guttridge uh, came off injured. We don't know exactly yet there is damage to his ankle, but we, we, you know, we, we don't really know too much yet. I think we'll, we'll know a bit more probably Monday, Tuesday. We don't know 100% at the moment. The chairman of the Football Association, Greg Dyke, has told the BBC that Jack Wilshire is injury prone and probably made the wrong decision to play on against Denmark on Wednesday. The Arsenal midfielder is out for six weeks with a hairline fracture in his left foot. And the England batsman Joe Root has been ruled out of the rest of the tour of the West Indies with a broken thumb. Root is flying back home and could miss the World T20 in Bangladesh later this month. BBC Three Counties News and Sports, the next full bulletin is at seven. Oh, hang on, Simon, I'm nowhere near ready. Sorry, I was, I was updating my Facebook status. Have you got any? You haven't got any bonus news or anything? Uh, bonus news? Uh, no. Uh, bonus sport? Uh, get, go on, go, get throwing the sports. Uh, Paralympics opening ceremony today. Uh, uh, World Indoor Athletics Championship start today in Poland. No, it's not really. No, not enough yet. Um, go on, one more should do it. One more should do it. Uh, three candy sport tomorrow from two. Full commentary on MK Don, Stevenage, uh, Wickham, and Luton from I two o'clock. I like it, Simon. Thank. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. He's good. He... I've got to say, uh, Kelly and Catherine, I've got to say, I'm uh, and Justin, uh, and Ben, and uh, Matt, and Ewan, and any of the other um, people that, uh, that purportedly work on this show, isn't it great that we've got Simon Oxley with us? A professional, a professional... He certainly is. Isn't he just? Do you know what he did? He pointed out that we'd be talking about this school that's asking for the extra contributions and we haven't actually named it. <laughs> should we name it now? <laughs> or should we keep them in suspense? <laughs> it's, it's Arnold Academy in Barton Le Clay. <laughs> Journalism, <laughs> class one. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> Whose fault was it? We... Oh, the mic's on. Can you hear me? 
Strolled elegantly, if a little casually. You look like a tipsy sixth former who snuck in a bottle, bottle of perno into the, the common room and you are a bit boozed up in your free lesson. Replace perno with very strong coffee. Hey, yeah, quite near the mark. Oh, man, wow, I've... that stuff we were drinking yesterday was the mild stuff, apparently. Oh, man, I'm travelling through time. <laughs> Seriously. Brian's in the outside lane of the M1 near Luton. Brian! Morning! Morning, Brian. What you got for me? Well, I thought if we're a Slack Friday, like we did at school, the girls could do the show. Hey, the, did you used to call it Slack Friday? Uh, it's not school uniform day or whatever, but it's probably going to get older, isn't it? All right, uh, 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 Brian, what, do you want the girls to do the show? Well, we, girls do the show, we'll just bring some games in and play games. <laughs> right, I, by coincidence, I brought my Spectrum and uh, uh, Miss has said hey. that we can use the, the portable TV. Hey, hang on, how come we've got to work? I want to get my screwball scramble out. Girls always wanted to work on the uh, last day of term. They yeah. always wanted to, didn't they, Brian? They always wanted to. Please, yeah. please, sir, you got any more work we can do? Yeah, get out of it. Yeah, go around taking the displays down so they can kiss the teachers. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, Brian, thank you very much indeed. Well, girls, over to you. I'm not working. It's Friday. I know you're not working. We didn't mention the name of the Bloomin' School in a story that's out. Kelly, you want to have a go? The radio? Yeah. Oh, hello. Kelly, he's using you. Hi. Don't, don't, hi, don't. Hi there. Um, I haven't got any papers though, and this is the paper slot, so it's a bit <laughs> freestyle. 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 This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't necessarily the best freestyle. Yeah. So something happened to me the other day. Okay. Oh, good. And tell I'm, me what. And I will. T- I will tell you what. Was it this? Was it a dog in a tracksuit? We don't put dog dogs. We don't put any animals in clothes, guys. If you put your animals in clothes, then you are a bad pet. Oh, no. This one's got wellies on. Oh, for God's sakes. You, you, we don't dress our animals. I'll give you a blanket over the back of a horse. That's it. You don't put um, monkeys in bowler hats and make them push pianos upstairs. I saw that in a documentary once. I think. Documentary. And we don't put jumpers on dogs. We don't do it. Why are they wearing them in that newspaper there? Because um, they've got a full page to read the Daily Express. So I was driving... Oh, my- it's Croft. So these are pampered. There's a, there's a backlash against Crofts, isn't there? Lots of people have come out this year saying Crofts is cruel. Really? Why? Or are they saying Crofts is cool? Crofts is cool or Crofts is cruel? They're saying it's cruel. I don't know why. I don't listen to that lot. Anyway, I was driving my car in a multi-storey car park. It wasn't owned by NCP. Right. I don't know who... What, what is NCP? National car parks. Yeah. Uh, or natural car parks. Or nice car parks. They are very nice, aren't they? So I was driving my car... And I got into a parking space. Getting into the parking space, I hit another car. <gasps> a ding! A di- wasn't it wasn't a hit hit. It was a ding hit. It was a ding dong. Oh gosh! What are you going to say? And I can see lawyers. No on the horizon. Trust me, I can make this one work. So, I did what any decent human being would do when you clip a car with your car. I drive drove as far away from it as possible to the other side of the car park. Sorry? I got out. I checked my car. Scuffage. Scuffage, tiny dentage. Primarily scuffage. The scuffage came off. Licked my fingers. Wiped the car. Licked them again. Wiped the car. The scuffage came off. Little scratchage. Dentage. Little ding dong. Catherine? Their you, car. Sorry? Did you check this their This was my car. Did you check their car? What I then did, as I was on the other side of the car park, I um, then got into the lift... <gasps> And went up to the seventh floor, which is the floor I had to go to. I had work. I got out. 
And then I felt really, really bad. So I got back in the lift, I went back down and I had a pen and paper and I went over to their car and I was going to leave a note. But but I didn't need to because their car was a BMW. It was built like a tank. Little scuffage, licked my fingers, wiped it. There was nothing there. Boom! Now, why are you pulling a face? I did the right thing. I thought you were going to run away. I did run away, but then I came back. I did the right thing eventually. Yeah. And as I was walking away, and I, I did consider going, of course I did, and I felt so guilty. And this shows that I'm developing as a human being. Mm-hmm. I felt so guilty. I felt so bad. And I got out of the lift at the top and I thought, man alive, I cannot do this. I have to go back and leave them a note. And it's gonna, And I was thinking I was going to cost money or make a claim on my insurer. Oh, nuts. Have to do it. And the relief in me when I saw there was no damage to the car whatsoever. It was my car had come off worse. But imagine, if you had not gone back, you'd yep. still be carrying that. I'd be you? carrying that guilt and shame. So I did the right thing. So I'd like to hear from you this... Uh, well, listen, uh, Je- uh, Jeffrey's in Bratton. Morning, Jeffrey. Morning. Jeffrey, not today. Uh, I'd like to hear from you, uh, uh, dear listener. Uh, uh, have you ever been in that situation? And what did you do? What did you do? And it's, it was really hard to do the right thing. But I did do the right thing eventually, and the uh, oh, the relief it was that. But it was a, a weight literally being taken out of my uh, my spine and thrown up into the air. Not literally, obviously. I've never had the thing where I've hit someone else's car when they've not been in it. Yeah, oh. I've hit someone's car when they've been in it. Yeah, and then had that horrible feeling when you're going to pull over and you know you're going to have a conversation. Yeah, it was wing mirror to wing mirror action. Oh, yeah, it was an elderly couple. Hey, they looked. Very shaken. Yeah. You're quite but, aggressive, aren't no, you? No, no. I got out of the car and I just said, I am so sorry. I completely misjudged this space. I'm really sorry. We both looked at it. Thankfully, there was no damage. Yeah. But that feeling when your guts end up in the bottom of your it's throat. It's exactly the feeling. Kelly Betts, what would you do in uh, that situation? Say that again, sorry. Well, uh, you say that again, sorry. Sorry, hello. Yeah, what would you do in that situation? I've been in that situation. Yeah. I hit somebody's car, they weren't in it. I yeah. came in and I said, Catherine, I'm so sorry I've hit your car. <laughs> oh, really? It was that was the first time new. I met her. Yeah. <laughs> it was Kath's brand new Nissan oh, Micro at oh, the time. mate. That was the first brand new car I'd ever had. And did, it, did you damage it? Yeah, completely. But did you only tell her because we have uh, CCTV in the no, car park? No, you told You told her it's the right thing. Yeah. One of my favourite incidents here was uh, when Gary Floyd, who presents uh, BBC <laughs> Introducing, he, um, he came up to me and said, yeah, I'm really sorry, I've hit your car in the car park. Oh. I was trying to be all zen about it. I was like, all right, well, let, uh, let's go and have a look. Let's go and see what the damage is. And we walked out into the car park and we walked towards my car. And then we walked past my car and he took me to something completely different car I'd never seen before. And there was a scrape all down it. And I went, oh, Gary. <laughs> oh, Gary! And he was, he, was, he, was, he was kind of shaking. He goes quite red as well, He's a he? big lad and he went red and he was shaking. I went, for, and I was milking it. Oh, Gary. I got my head in my hand. Gary. Gary! It's not my car, mate. And I got in my car and drove away laughing. And he was terrified because he didn't, he didn't have to go and do it again. He oh, had to go through the same hell twice. It's so horrible. If you've ever been in that situation, dear listener, let, we can explore that. What would you do? Some people... My, uh, my wife had... Um, uh, her car got hit. Someone left a note on the car. The note said, I'm really sorry. I've, I've banged your car. Someone's watching me, so I'm leaving a note. <gasps> and that was it. No contact details, no phone number, no insurance, nothing. I know someone who saw a car being hit and the driver drive away and they left a note saying here's the guy's registration hey. number. So, don't kid a kidder. You have to. And, I, and, and I, the thing that got me was as I was going away one of the things I was thinking, what, what if it happened? To, and it has exactly. happened to me. I've had people d- dent me in a car park. And that's why I didn't kill Kelly Betts because yep. I'd done it to someone else's brand new car about yep. three months beforehand. Yep. 08459 four double five five. We haven't got time for the papers which we do them in a little bit. Yeah. Let's have some of this. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the speed sensors in Borehamwood, the A1 southbound looking very slow at Stirling Corner. Also, the north circular westbound is queuing between the M1 for Staples Corner and the Brentfield Road. Uh, major problems, um, major routes, sorry, still looking good. The A5 northbound a little slow as you pass Dunstable, but it is moving. Public transport, we've got no reported problems. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. (laughs) 
Right, it's 6.45, it's Friday the 7th of March. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. And in sport, the chairman of the Football Association, Greg Dyke, says Jack Wilshire is injury-prone and probably made the wrong decision to play on against Denmark on Wednesday. The Arsenal player is out for six weeks with a broken foot. BBC Three Counties Radio, let's get the weather now. Here's Elizabeth Rizzini. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hello, hello, very good morning to you. Um, generally, the weather is set very nice, actually, for the rest of this week and into next week, but there will be a bit of a blip in proceedings today because it'll turn quite cloudy, even if it's not cloudy where you are at the moment, it will turn quite cloudy, and eventually we'll start to see some outbreaks of just mostly light rain, a little bit of drizzle, uh, particularly over the tops of the Chilterns, of course, um, as we head through the late morning and even into the first part of the afternoon, but then it will start to clear and it will be brighter by the time we get to the middle the end of the afternoon we may even see some spells of sunshine around and it will feel quite pleasant a bit later on through the day as well top temperatures of perhaps as high as 14 or even 15 degrees celsius particularly over parts of Hertfordshire. so it's not going to turn into a bad day but um but you might be wondering what that stuff is falling out the sky when we said it was going to be nice um yeah so a few outbreaks of rain around uh, for later on this morning overnight tonight then it will be clear skies at first temperatures dropping lower than they did last night uh, between around four and six degrees in many of the towns we will see things cloud over into tomorrow morning now it will be a bit of a gray start to the day again tomorrow but some sunshine emerging very nicely as we head through the late morning into the afternoon it's uh, it's going to be a lovely day tomorrow actually we could be looking at temperatures again up to 15 or even 16 degrees celsius not only on saturday but also on sunday we're talking wall-to-wall sunshine perhaps on sunday and uh, we might even be looking at 17 or even 18 degrees celsius it's pretty high for this time of year and uh, then into next week it will be a touch cooler but some sunny days and some chilly nights that's the forecast thanks very much the six nations this weekend it's turning into a classic can ireland edge closer to the championship against italy he's hit to rob Carney. well worked irish tie scotland hosts france could it be back-to-back victories Will flourishing England and Wales renewed title defence. Our fiercest rivals are those who are closest. The Six Nations continues tomorrow afternoon from 2.30 across the BBC. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Now, fly tippers are always cheeky beggars, but this lot takes the biscuit. Someone's made a huge, and I'm talking lorry-sized hole, in an empty warehouse in Dunstable and filled the whole thing with rubbish. Well, the Environment Agency is appealing for information to catch those responsible for what happened at uh, Eckermold on Luton Road. Well, Kim uh, Igbokan is from the agency's crime team. Morning, Kim. Good morning, Ian. This happened in November. Why are you only now appealing for information? It was only reported to the Environment Agency in January, and as the public are aware, we've been dealing a lot with the flight uh, flooding. So um, we have been investigating it since January, but we are asking for people to assist now. So what, what, what's, what's been dumped there? What kind of stuff is it? It's household and commercial waste. Um, some of it has been through uh, a waste process of some sort already, but um, it's just... Uh, annoying for the landowner and um, a problem for the environment having waste dumped at a site that's unpermitted. What have your um, uh, your investigations revealed so far? We um, have had um, traceable waste found which we are following on inquiries with uh, public in and around London and other areas. How do you trace? How do you trace waste? Is it the kind of like letters and things with addresses on? Yes, yeah, that's correct. Oh, yeah, we've sorted through the waste. Oh dear! And, um, it wasn't a pleasant job, but someone's got to do it. Well, so do, do you do that, Kim? Or who, who gets? Who draws the short straw and, and has to glove up and, and go in there? 
Yeah, both the crime team did that, as well as the environment team. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. You would have thought that if it was this much stuff, a whole lorry-sized load, uh, and the hole was cut into the side of the warehouse, that, that someone would have seen this. That's right, and that's why we're appealing. So if anybody has seen anything, if they can contact the Environment Agency or Crime Stoppers. And have you had much response, Kim, from people? Yes, um, we sent out letters to those people that we identified, um, addresses and names, and uh, we have had several calls. But you never know, someone may have seen a lorry in that area and they may have some useful information. Kim, I appreciate your time and your good work. Well done, you. That's uh, Kim Igbakan uh, from the Environment Agency. 08459 455 555. Kelly Betts, it's your chance to... She's on the phone. I could do it. I could do it. But BBC introduce it. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of young, it's hip, it's hosted by Gary Floyd. Well, apart from the latter, that's all me, isn't it? Uh, all right, then, away you go. Hey, pop pickers. Hey. Here's Oof. a new track from some hey. new hip young dudes from a popular beat combo. Well, they're not popular yet, but they will be. Here's a BBC introducing track of the Friday. I don't know who's by. I'm back. Who's it by? Too late. We'll, 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 we'll back Anno it, but that was just... That was... Please let me say... At least let me say the name. It's too late. We've got to crash the vocals.
Now, th- that song certainly had my knee bouncing. Now, that means I'm either angry or I liked it. I don't know which yet. But Kelly Bet, supposing I wanted to pop into Our Price Records uh, and buy this, who would I ask? Who would I ask the uh, goth behind the counter for? Daniel and the Good Ones. Hey. They're from Watford. And what's and the name of this it. seven inch? Robin Hood. Hey. hey! You made it sound a lot better than Catherine did. I mean, she really. Um... I think she did a great job. Well. I mean, let's just say Gary Floyd's job is safe as long as Catherine's on the prowl. Oh. Eh? That's mm-hmm. harsh. It's fa- but fair. You know, you caught me on the hop. D- d- well. Some people train for years for that kind of vibe. You know, <laughs> to achieve it in two minutes. <laughs> that, for that kind of vibe. Tom's in Luton. Morning, Tom. Morning. Tom, what you got for me? Uh, how's your driving coming up? My, my driving is pretty much spot on, Tom. Just every now um, and then. Are you... Uh, every now and then, not mostly now and then. No, it's Ian Lee you're talking to, not Justin Dee Lee. Uh, oh, really? Oh, right, I didn't know you sounded different. Y- yeah, what's your point, Tom? Um, why did you get out and have a look before you thought you were so close to that car? Right. Yeah, why did you get out and have a look? You wouldn't cause any damage to yours, eh? Well, but I don't mind causing damage to go. Would you mean, well, get out and have a look before I pulled into a parking space? Are you insane, Tom? Who does that? You must have known he was close to the vehicle. Well, yeah, and I, it was confirmed for me when it went... Uh, oh, it's made, it's made of tin, is it? Yeah. Tom, what, I'm, I, I, I'm feeling an attitude from you, brother, and I'm trying to be friendly. Why, where, why have you got a cop <laughs> on with me? Oh, I ain't got a problem with you. I'm just saying, why didn't you get out and have a look if you thought you were so close to that car? Because, I, because Tom, guess what? I didn't think I was so close to the car. I misjudged it. These Always. things happen. Always pays to have a look, doesn't it? No, Tom, who gets out of their car when they're pulling into a parking space? Be surprised. If that was a truck, what would you have done? If it was a truck? Yeah. What, in an NCP car park? Anywhere. Would you mean if, it, if, if what had been a truck? If I was driving a truck? No, no, if you see the car and there's a truck, and you thought, you know, I'm getting a bit close here, should I get out and have a look? But, Tom, Tom, you're missing the integral point of this. I didn't think I was getting a bit close. I misjudged it. Oh, OK. Have a nice day, anyway. Tom, I've got, I, I ask you again, what's your, what's your beef? Beef? No, I don't have beef. Oh, go away. What? <laughs> I, I was trying to be friendly and warm with him, and he's got... got I tell you what, Tom, don't, I, you, I don't think this show is for you. I, what, what's the frequency for heart? Let's send Tom over there. They can have his, uh, his whole load of attitudes. He's brought the... He's brought me... Put me on a downer, man. I don't really know what he was trying to say to you. Who gets out, who gets out and looks when they're parking? Um, Brian Harvey. He, well, he should have done. Well, he With tried to, didn't he? consequences. He ran himself over. What happened was, it was a car parking space. There was plenty of room. It, was in, it wasn't an NTP, but it was like something like that. I misjudged it. I, t- I just misjudged it. Good drivers do ding sometimes. Every, everyone has a little ding every now. What, what was Tom's problem? Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. What was Tom's problem there? Maybe you, you know, dear listener. He's put me on a downer, Catherine. Get, get me up. Maybe someone done a ding and run on Tom. <laughs> Did you do a ding and run on Tom? Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the M25, anti-clockwise, things looking heavy around Junction 25 for Enfield. Also on the speed sensors in Harpenden, things are busy on the High Street in both directions around Station Road. In Borehamwood, the A1 southbound is queuing at Stirling Corner. Public transport still looking good. We've got no reported problems. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much, Alice. My friend has just tweeted me, listening to whilst listening to Tom's call, don't take this, mate. You can do this, bloke. He's a plonker. He's not said plonker, obviously. He said something a little bit stronger. <laughs> Tom's really thrown a curveball at me. We're having a little bit of fun, a little bit of banter. I'm throwing out some classic beats at Tom and he's, he's not having it. So, did you do a ding and rung on Tom? Give me a call now. Speak to you after this. The news with Simon. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio.
It's seven o'clock. The headlines. Buckinghamshire woman could face appeal court after frozen sperm ruling. Milton Keynes councillors vote to knock down the point. And Bedfordshire Academy asking parents for extra money. BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority has until mid-March to decide whether to appeal. The initial ruling means that 28-year-old Beth Warren can keep the sperm in storage for up to 55 years. I put my physiotherapy course on hold while I cared for my husband and I need the time to establish myself emotionally, financially, professionally so that if I have a child, I can give that child all the love, all the stability, everything that they would want. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. The Point was built in 1985 and was one of the first multiplex cinemas in the UK. A Bedfordshire Academy school is asking parents to pay extra towards their children's education. More from you and Duncan. Arnold Academy in Barton sent a letter to parents asking for a top-up of £20 per pupil. It blames changes in the way schools are now financed for the decision to appeal for more money. The letter says the Academy is no longer able to cover the full costs of extracurricular clubs as well as creative activities such as music, drama and sports, along with the use of the minibus. The Academy says the contributions are voluntary and are in line with the vast majority of schools. David Cameron is in Bedfordshire this morning. The Prime Minister will be promoting the Help to Buy scheme. Downing Street says 375 people in Bedfordshire have bought a house through the scheme, with central Bedfordshire the fourth highest place in the country for equity loan sales. President Obama has spoken to Russia's President Vladimir Putin to urge him to help find a diplomatic solution to the crisis in Ukraine. The Paralympic Winter Games open this afternoon in the Russian resort of Sochi. The Ukrainian team will decide later today whether to take part or to boycott the event. A builder from Aylesbury who conned a vulnerable widow out of half a million pounds has been caught after going on the run. John Jenkins has now had an extra two weeks added to his six-year sentence for fraud. He took two overdoses whilst on the run and was arrested in hospital. A huge amount of waste has been found dumped inside an empty warehouse in Bedfordshire. The fly tippers cut a lorry-sized hole in the side of the building at Dunstable to get in. More from Lee Agnew. The Environment Agency says that over four days last November, around 3,000 cubic metres of waste was dumped illegally inside the warehouse on the former Eco Mould site along Luton Road. It's left the landowner with a huge bill to get it removed. Officers are now appealing for witnesses as the waste must have been taken to the site in large vehicles and machinery must have been used to gain access to the building. In sport, Dean Bowditch could return to the MK Don squad for tomorrow's trip to Swindon but Luton will be without Luke Guttridge for the away game at Salisbury. The weather cloudy with a chance of some patchy light rain this morning but sunnier this afternoon, a maximum temperature 14 degrees Celsius and you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk UK slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. Well, I think the jewel in the crown is definitely the river. I've got my friends here now, so I don't think I'd move. I think I'll be here until they carry me out. It's all about where you live. You do feel part of the community. It's quite tight, in the, especially in the area where I live. And all this week, we're featuring Kempston. It's a nice place. I'm part of the local history society as well. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. I'm feeling uncomfortable after Tom's call. We're going to put it out as an audio boo so you can have a listen but the, the the point is they're called accidents they're not called deliberate that's a really good point and true thank you very much indeed tom's got me feeling a little bit don't feel like that i'm feeling like it as a impartial bystander yeah i don't think it was about you his anger ah, something's happened you saying he was angry with himself and he used me as a tom mirror or someone else done a ding on tom did you do a ding on Tom and run? Oh, wait, four, five, nine, four, double, five, five, double, five. And if anybody wants to call either their band, their album or their autobiography, did you do a ding on Tom and run? Feel free to. Feel it's our gift to you this morning, Beds, Hearts and Bucks. I wouldn't want to tell Tom that I'd done a ding on him. I do. You, you wouldn't tell Tom you'd done a ding on him. You would run, wouldn't you? Right or wrong, you'd run. Was it right or wrong that you run when you did a ding on Tom? Oh, wait, four five nine four double five etc etc etc. There'll be other stuff we're talking about, including a story we featured yesterday. 
Went to the High Court. A Newport Pagnell woman has won her legal fight for more time to decide when and if to bear her late husband's child. Well, can you understand why she might want to do that? We all make plans assuming we've got all the time in the world, but here's a news flash, kids. We haven't. An academy in barton le Clay has sent a letter home saying funding changes mean they need additional financial support from you, the parents. The head said he's acting in line with the vast majority of schools. Well, if you've got kids or grandkids, have you received a letter home asking for cash? And the point in Milton Keynes is going to be flattened. Does it make you happy or does it make you cry? Forget Facebook, I'm not in the mood. Phone calls this morning is what we require from you. 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. We're also uh, asking, after I revealed, I dinged a car the other day in a car park. I drove away, I walked away, I got in the lift, I went up to the top floor to uh, go to work. And the whole time I was doing it, I was sweating and I felt nauseous. I got back in the lift, I went downstairs, I took out a pen and paper, I went to the car. I was about to leave a note with my uh, registration details, my phone number, all of my details. And I looked... Their car had not been damaged. It was only mine. It was, theirs was a BMW. It was built like a flipping tank. Relief! Oh! Have you been in a similar situation? What did, we all know what we should do, but what did you do? Well, maybe you've been on the receiving end, like Tom was, of a ding, and run. 08459 455 555. Now, yesterday, if you remember, about this time, we spoke to a very nervous woman. Rightly so. Beth Warren... She's the lady from Newport Pagnell who was fighting to stop the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority destroying her late husband's sperm sample in April of next year. Warren Brewer put the sample into storage before starting cancer treatment in 2005. Current regulations dictate samples can only be kept for 10 years unless extra paperwork is signed. Well, Beth successfully argued that he'd signed everything he'd been offered and had even made phone calls to the clinic to make sure she'd be able to use the sample as and when she felt ready. She was represented yesterday by James Lawford Davis, who's a partner at Lawford Davis De Noon Solicitors. James, good morning to you. Good morning. And, and well done for yesterday. J- just clarify exactly what happened yesterday and what does it mean? Uh, well, yesterday, Dame Justice Hogg, the judge who heard the case in January, um, handed down her judgment in which she said that the sperm could remain in storage for up to 55 years from the time that it was stored, subject to certain qualifications, but um, it means that Beth is free to use it when she's ready and uh, has had time to make the decision that she needs to make. And we spoke to Beth yesterday. I mean, she only lost her husband a couple of years ago, uh, and she was very nervous uh, yesterday. It must have been a huge relief for her. Well, it was. We were delighted with the outcome, um, and she was very pleased. The only uh, sting in the tail was that a few hours later, the regulator, the HFEA, um, announced that they were contemplating appealing against the decision, um, and they've been given 10 days in which to make a decision about whether or not to to challenge it. And this was the roller coaster of yesterday, because I was following this on Twitter, because I was out and about, and I saw a tweet in the afternoon saying, yes, she's won, and I I was very pleased for her. Then a couple of hours later, but, dot, 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 they might appeal. It was an an extremely difficult afternoon. So after the (sighs) elation, um, it it, it really felt very disappointing and frustrating that it's still hanging over her now. Have the uh, HFEA given any indication as to to what they might do? And and why would they want to appeal? They, They must know how painful this is for Beth. Well, they say that they're concerned about the wider implications of the case, but... I must say I'm struggling to see what they would do because the facts of this case is so unusual and so specific and particular to Beth's circumstances and those of, of her husband. So I, I think the wider implications are actually very limited, um, but that's their main reason for thinking about it. If uh, Let's assume the worst-case scenario, the HFEA, uh, they, they appeal, um, and, and be- but Beth won the appeal. Would that be the end of it? Would that be the full stop? Or is there a chance there could be another round? Uh, well, in theory, they could take it further to the Supreme Court um, if we were successful in the Court of Appeal. 
Uh, but then that that would be the end of the raid. Although usually in in a case like this, I think they'd probably probably leave it after the court of appeal. But we'd have to wait and see. If it goes to appeal, is is Beth going to fight? I know that yesterday she was saying if she lost, she wasn't sure she uh, had the oomph to carry on with it. Well, one of the um, peculiarities of this situation now is that in many respects she has no choice. Oh. Um, because this this is the regulator's decision rather than hers. So if the case goes back to court, then um, then we would have to uh, have to attend and, and make the same arguments again. James, it's a fascinating case, and I, I appreciate your time. And we'll be speaking to Beth a little bit later on, so we'll certainly find out how she's uh, feeling. But James uh, Lawford Davis, partner at Lawford Davis Danoon, thank you very much uh, indeed. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. If you want to have your say on that, and yes, I did use the word oomph in uh, a conversation with a solicitor there. I don't know if it's actually a legal term, but uh, certainly. Oh, I can see the uh, the big guns are coming out. Look, the, the strong coffee is in Ben Nye's hand. This is very, very dangerous. Uh, we'll be speaking to Beth later on. Keen to get your thoughts on this. Can you understand why she would want to do this? I mean, she's not definite she wants to have kids with her dead husband's sperm. There's a sentence you don't get to hear on breakfast radio very often. But can you understand why she'd want at least to have the option to do this? I'm starting to get it a little bit more. I'm still struggling to get my head around it completely. If, I, if I'm being honest with you, I, I'm struggling. Probably different for me because I'm a bloke. Uh, but I'm starting to understand it a little bit more. Are you understanding it or do you think it's plain odd? 08459 four double five five double five is the uh, telephone if you want to give me a call. I don't want Facebooks and texts today. Can we just have phone calls today? I, I, if, if, I, I don't fancy reading out texts and Facebook comments. Um, so if you want to have your say in any of the stuff that we're talking about this morning, uh, then phone calls it is, please. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Dennis... Good morning, Ian. Am I off speakerphone? Yes, you're off speakerphone, yes. OK. You're naughty, naughty for putting me on speakerphone. Why? I don't like... Th- things I don't like, OK? Yeah. Uh, speakerphone. Uh, call waiting. Oh, I don't do that. Oh, I don't like the call waiting when you get... Because you, you can hear it drop out and you know the other person's getting a ping saying they've got call awaiting. And then they go, right, yeah, I've got to go now. Oh, you've got to go... So, someone else is more important than me, is it? Well, have some of that. I wouldn't do that to you. I'd just tell you to push off. Hang on, when I ring you, it rings twice and then goes... Beep. Oh, yeah, I cut you off. Keep yeah. you on your toes, Catherine. Keep you on your toes, isn't it? Dennis, what would you like to say, sir? This lady uh, and the sperm business, it's now gone from... <laughs> I've, I've seen that film, yes. This is Beth, yes. It's gone from the sublime to ridiculous. Go on. Keeping this stuff for 50 years, that means she'll be at least 80. You know, it's ridiculous. Why couldn't they say 20 years? That would have been much more easy, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, 50 years is... is uh, um... Yes, that seems a little bit extreme, but I guess that's just the way that the, the, the legalities are couched, isn't it? That's, that's well, how they have to do it. Your lovely lady just said it so they wouldn't be able to cu- pull the uh, rug from underneath her. Well, at, at 80, nobody should be pulling rugs from under people. I don't know, but my days of rug pulling are far behind me, Dennis. I do, yes. And incidentally, I saw you again last night in beautiful Technicolor. Oh, I'm a good-looking guy, aren't I? No, you're not. You look a scruff. Thank you very much, Dennis. Indeed. How rude. How rude. Um, well, he's banned for the rest of the week. Tony's in Dunstable. Morning, Tony. Good morning to you. Tony, what you got for me? Uh, just, uh, we referenced your, uh, accident in the car park. Oh, I dinged a car, I walked away, I felt full of shame, I went back to the car just yesterday, and now I'm not the same. I did a poem! I'm a poet and I didn't realise. Yes, Tony? <laughs> uh, well, some years ago, my boss had a brand spanking new white Citroen. Yeah. And, uh, I worked for a council at the time, and every couple of days, he went down to the car park and, uh, lovingly wash his car oh. and vacuum it out. Uh, she's very proud of it. So uh, I decided to uh, fake a big scrape down the side of it with the aid of a roll of cling film, a black felt tip pen, and some yellow crayons. Oh I no! Made, I made it look as if uh, all down one side of the car had been scraped by a council van. Oh mate! And then that lunchtime, he came out with his bucket and sponge as normal, walked across the car park, suddenly spotted this on the side of his car. Dropped the bucket and sponge and soaked his feet and uh, 
uh, ran across the car park in hysterics. And at what point did you do the wonderful reveal? Uh, he actually did it himself. Once he got close enough, he could see it was just stuck oh, on the side. Mate. But then he turned around to find a whole bunch of council workers looking at him Tony, and laughing. Excellent stuff. That what a wicked. I'm letting you go because the line's not great. But what a what a wicked man. People people get really funny about their cars. I don't. My car is to get me to A to B. I, I ding it. I said yeah, the, I don't really care as long as it works. I don't care what it looks like or what condition it's in. I do take exception when people ding it when I'm sitting in it though. Oh yes. A number of times when I've been sitting in a car park, maybe be just about to get out of my car and I let yeah. the person next to me get out first. Yeah. They just open their door into my car. Hey, there's some... They're so rude. I always put my hand in the way, don't you? Did you put your hand against the ridge of your car door? So? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People here's don't a, here's, bang. Here's something, here's something. And I'm, I'm, Maybe I shouldn't say this on air. It's about someone here. Oh. Should I say this? I'm going to say it on air. There's someone here who um, parks... Really close. So close, I've had to get in through the passenger door. Hang on a minute, I'll, let me just tell you. Mm? Yeah, yeah? I've had that. Yeah. Do they notice, because obviously they're on the far side of the car. You should be spatially aware. I mean, thankfully, I'm no fatter than I am. Because I'm just about big enough to squeeze into my car yeah, but Billy, to Billy, be the right size. But Billy, obviously a large fella like you is going to have trouble. Billy Bunter could say he's no fatter than I am. That's meaningless. But I, if I were any fatter, I wouldn't be able to get in is what I'm trying to say. Kelly? Have you seen my parking today? No, is it awesome? It's awful. Oh. I've parked um, in line next to you yeah. so that our cars are perfectly in line. Yeah. And then I've got it out and the line for the space is well over there. Guys, I, listen, can I, can I tell you something? Well, you no, know, she, no. D- she dinged my car no, no, and, no, and confessed. No, no, I no, didn't park no, next to her no, for ages. No, after Catherine, that. It's, sev- it's 17 minutes past oh, seven. We are well. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. On the N25, anti-clockwise, things are heavy at Junction 25 for Enfield. And on the speed sensors in Hitchin, the A602 is busy towards the centre of town from the A1M. And the A5 northbound busy but moving around Dunstable. In Borehamwood, the A1 southbound still very slow at Stirling Corner. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Alice, sorry to keep you waiting. Thank you for your patience. And a, a little natter there, I do apologise. 7.17, it is, where are we now? Friday the 7th of March, I'm Ian Lee. Oh, Ben Nye's just appeared with uh, Class A coffee for us all. Thank you, Ben. Here are your news headlines. A woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to court, the Court of Appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. The councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. And in sport, Dean Bowditch, 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 Bowditch... Bowditch? Bowditch. Bowditch could return to the MK Don squad for tomorrow's trip to Swindon, but Luton will be without Luke Guttridge for the away game at Salisbury. BBC Three Counties Radio. Every weekday from three. Why would anyone buy a mattress off the back of a van? Roberto Peroni. How do you keep a straight face? That is so funny. A professor from the University of Bedfordshire has followed in the footsteps of Indiana Jones. Weekdays from three. It's the family and lifestyle debate. Got an hour discussing business and finance. It's our politics panel discussing how politics affects us. Later in the show, it's all about the entertainment world. Roberto Peroni. Weekdays from three on BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. We're talking about Dingham Runs. It's when you ding someone's car and then you do a runner, you scarper, you leg it. I did it the other day. I'm not proud of it. I felt terrible. Dinged a car, parked on the other side of the car park... Uh, got out, felt nauseous with worry, thinking, oh, my God, the cost, oh, this is the shame, oh, this is awful. Got in the lift, went up to the seventh floor, walked out of the lift and thought, I cannot do it. I can't do it. I've got to go back. 
And I went back, got in the lift, got pen, looking in my bag for a pen and paper. I thought, right, I'm going to start writing the notes. I'm really sorry. My name's Ian. I bumped into your car. This is my phone number. Got to their car, saw there was a scuff mark. Thought, oh, BMW. Went and wiped the scuff mark. Literally no damage. It was a BMW. It was built like a tank. My car was dented a little bit. Their car was perfect. But aren't you glad you went back? Oh, man. Totally. Totally. I felt, as I was going back, I felt scared, but the sickness passed because I knew I was doing the right thing. I thought, well, this is going to be annoying and expensive and a bit of a hassle. Uh, and then I got there and the car was fine. I thought, oh, not only is the car fine, I've done the right thing. You know what you've done? What you've been doing all week, in fact, for the last two weeks? Eight, yeah. Addressing the di- uncomfortable situation. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that, that mantra Sorry? that you've been doing, that thing. What thing? When you said, I'm going to take on the... Oh, I can, I, I can never quite... Someone told me this thing, and I can't quite remember the words, and it's one of those kind of... It sounds like one of those hippy-dippy, um, uh, not... Uh, what, what's the word? Uh, not aphorism, amorism, a plectoplasm. What's the word? What's the word? Truism. Could be a truism. A saying. Let's just say a no, saying. No, there's a word. What do you... S- affirmation. Yes. Um, although it's not quite an affirmation. But what, what is it? No, affirmation's more like, you're brilliant! You're brilliant! Chicks love you, man! I say that every morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it, it, what is it? I can't remember. Embrace the, embrace the uncomfortableness, awkwardness. The discomfort. Um, that's it. Embrace the discomfort and don't have the... Resem- I can't remember. Basically, go and go. Don't go and do the uncomfortable thing, and you you get will it over. get it over and done with, and you won't have the resentment or the fear or anything later. Two words: like, man up. That's what it is. <laughs> isn't it? It's man up. Okay, so we all have things that we're avoiding in life, yep. avoiding dealing with, yep. and you keep it in the back of your mind as part of your mental little book of grievances yep. against people. Go and say it. If it's not going to hurt right. them, they can probably feel it too. Yeah. Get it out. Do you know what? You're right. Can I have a word of the after the show? Yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about something as well. I wait four, five, five. <laughs> so childish. <laughs> so childish. I wait four, five, nine, four, double, five, five, double, five. Do give us your call about your story because we've all had it. I remember, um, remember spending the day in court with my mother because she'd um, been robbed. Right. So it's really long, and we were there all day. We were told to get there for nine. The case wasn't seen till five. Long day in Uxbridge. Of all, no, not Uxbridge. High Wycombe. It's in High Wycombe. And I remember coming out, and we won the court case, but it was a long, tiring day, and I got to my car, and there was a massive dent in the side. In a car park, big dent. Someone had hit it, and I hadn't left a note or anything. I thought, flipping heck. Really, just, I went and paid... And that was the, that was the start of a chain reaction of car disasters, because I, I paid my, for myself to get it fixed, which cost a fortune. And while it was getting fixed, I got a higher car. And while I had that higher car, get this right, parked opposite my flat at the time in North London. While I had the hire car, I looked out of the window one day to see a, a, a drunk had smashed into it. So I got another hire car and a roof blew off on a building and crushed it. Man alive. Should we have a look at the front pages of the newspapers? Yeah, lots. The Daily Telegraph. Oh, corruption in the police? Corruption, corruption and racism in the police? No. What, the police have been corrupt and racist? No. Yeah. Anyone else listen to, uh, was it Theresa May yesterday, reading out the statement, the investigation into uh, Stephen Lawrence and the case? Incredible, incredible listening. 21, listen to it on Five Live, and it was, it was on loads of stations. 21 years of struggle and there is still more to come. Mother of murdered Stephen Lawrence finds that Scotland Yard corruption even extended to spying on her family. After being told she had been the victim of two decades of corruption, spying and cover-ups, Doreen Lawrence might have vented fury at the Home Office Minister opposite her in the House of Lords yesterday. Instead, she was dignity-defined, wasn't she just? As she held her tears in check and spoke quietly of 21 years of struggle. Now, this woman... Doreen Lawrence has got every right in the world to kick off. To be furious. Her son was murdered. It was covered up. There were lies, there were corruption. And she had every right yesterday to kick off and be furious. And man alive, if you heard Doreen Lawrence speak yesterday... Isn't she an inspiration to us all on how to handle yourself in a situation like that? Absolutely. I mean, the woman is remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. I was listening to a phone-in uh, show on another station. 
And there were people getting in touch saying, oh, she needs to get over it now. She's got. A, she's a baroness. She's got, get, get over it. Her son was murdered. The the, the case was handled appallingly, and the the uh, there were, was racism and corruption in the police that that prevented. Still, some of the people haven't been brought to justice. I thought she was amazing yesterday. Thought she was absolutely amazing. She's become a figurehead for something that is beyond yep. her son's murder. It's about yep. the right way to treat everybody in this country and unfortunately and disgracefully that was not happening she was absolutely incredible oh eight four five nine four double five five double five now this academy a bedfordshire school uh, sent parents a letter asking them to pay extra towards their child's education arnold academy in barton we mentioned the name this time well done us high fives all round <laughs> says the contributions of 20 pounds per pupil up to a maximum of 40 pounds would be voluntary blames changes in the way schools are now financed for their decision to appeal for more money Catherine I mean, what is this? Yeah, we saw the on? original letter to parents, and this was brought to us by a parent who was concerned that this was something new, and concerned by the phrase that, that um, up until t- for, for the last two years we've not needed additional um, funding from parents, yeah. but something's changed in the way that schools are funded, and uh, and they're going to need them to step in. They're asking for twenty pounds per child, maximum of forty pounds per household, voluntary donation, and the parent is telling us that they have been asked to put their children's names on these donations. Yes, write Uh, their kids' names on the back of the cheque or on the envelope, please. And and the idea is that this helps the school fund extracurricular activities, so sports clubs, things like that, but also after-school clubs, lunch clubs, things like that, um, and also uh, trips, um, visits from theatre companies, etc. I'm I'm struggling to get my head around this a little bit. Part of me thinks, this is outrageous. Part of me thinks... It's, it's all right. Explain why it's so bad. The interesting thing is that that I, the, the idea that something had changed in the way schools were funded yeah. was something that the head teacher, when he gave us a statement, unfortunately he's not joining us on air, and I do hope that if he's listening now and he feels that he would want to... Steve Kelly. We, we'd want to speak to Mr. him. Mr Kelly, give we, us a call. We're not having a, a go at, at, at Arnold Academy. We get the feeling this is happening elsewhere too. We're just trying to find out whether there is a problem that's well, affecting other schools. Mr Kelly, the headmaster, uh, uh, has said this is happening elsewhere and we've put out the call this morning for other parents and grandparents to get in touch with us if it's happening at your kid's school Mm -hmm. no one's got in touch yet now that doesn't necessarily prove anything but uh, i would have expected a phone call from a parent saying oh yeah no we got a letter saying they want 15 20 quid from us it just may be unfortunate that the statements missed out what we were trying to get at but um mr kelly is talking about the donations that are given over the course of a year and i'm a parent too i know that you're forever putting your hand in your pocket for two quid here maybe a fiver there the art materials things like that but this seems to be something a bit different because of the original letter mm. was talking about changes in funding, meaning they needed more support from parents. Then when we spoke to Mr Kelly, he said, no, what we're trying to do is put all these contributions that we'd ask for anyway into one bulk donation. We're just trying to find out what, what's the case and whether this is something that's happening elsewhere across the, the three counties. And if it's voluntary, what happens if no one pays it? Then what? They, they, what are they stuffed? What, what, what happens? Or what, what if, if uh, you know, little Johnny, uh, the, you know, in, in form four B pays it, but the, but Stephen, who's sitting next to him, doesn't pay it? Do they get treated differently? What? And playing devil's advocate, if your child doesn't go to afternoon after school clubs, yep. doesn't need the lunchtime club, doesn't need the after school um, care. Why would you pay it? It's an interesting one. Uh, Mr Kelly, if you are listening, do give us a call. We're not having a pop. We're trying to understand it. This is one of those stories we, we, we're sort of trying to um, get our heads around. And there'll be lots of parents who would love to hear your opinion. The phone number, uh, if you want to give me a call, is 08459 455 555. And that's also the number if you are, are, are a parent of someone who goes to this school. Or if you're in uh, another school, uh, have you had a letter or an email or a phone call saying, look, funding's changed. Can we, can we get... 15, 20 quid, please. Or is this something that's just affecting academies? Yep. Is this something we should know about the way academies are being funded? Something's changed recently. 08459 four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Roxton, the A1 southbound building up now at the Black Cat roundabout and the A5 southbound still looking slow on the speed sensors but now around Mark Yate. In Kings Langley, the A41 southbound heavy at the M25 
On the M1 London bound, things are building up between Junction 9 for Redbourne and 7 for Hemel Hempstead. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Alice, thank you very much indeed. That number to call about schools, about dings and runnings in cars. If you've been listening, you'll know what I'm talking about. And also, the point, the point in Milton Keynes is a goner. They're getting rid of it. You can call in about that, or you can call in about anything, to be honest. 08459 455 555. It's 7.30. It's BBC Three Counties Radio. Let's get the news and sport now with Simon Oxley. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. The headlines, a woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority has ten days to decide whether to appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. And David Cameron is in Bedfordshire this morning. The Prime Minister will be promoting the Help to Buy scheme down in Street says 375 people in Bedfordshire have bought a house through the scheme. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Dean Bowditch could return to the MK Don squad for tomorrow's trip to Swindon with manager Carl Robinson promising changes to personnel and formation. Yeah, I'm looking to make two or three changes for Saturday. Um, I think some players need a rest, some players need to have a realisation of where they're at. Um, So there'll be some impact changes, yes. And uh, we do feel we're going to go there. We're going to change the shape. We're going to change one or two things to the shape. So we're going to uh, we're going to try and challenge Swindon in a different way. Also in League One, Stevenage face a key game in their relegation battle as they host fellow strugglers Tranmere. Wickham skipper Stuart Lewis remains a doubt for the League Two match at home to Hartlepool as he continues his recovery from a hamstring problem. And Conference leaders Luton will head to Salisbury tomorrow without Luke Guttridge. The midfield was injured in last week's win over Alfreton. Manager John Still is waiting for a full diagnosis. Uh, Luke Guttridge uh, came off injured. We don't know exactly yet there is damage to his ankle, but we, we, you know, we, we don't really know too much yet. I think we'll, we'll know a bit more probably Monday, Tuesday. We don't know 100% at the moment. The chairman of the Football Association, Greg Dyke, has told the BBC that Jack Wilshire is injury-prone and probably made the wrong decision to play on against Denmark on Wednesday. The Arsenal midfielder is out for six weeks with a hairline fracture in his left foot. And the England batsman Joe Root has been ruled out of the rest of the tour of the West Indies with a broken thumb. Root is flying back home and could miss the World T20 in Bangladesh later this month. BBC Three Counties News and Sports. The next full bulletin is at eight. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. So what are we talking about this morning? But, well, we've kind of lowered the, the, the threshold a little bit this morning in that you can call in about anything. It's kind of open house this morning. It's Mufti Day. Call in about anything you want. The things that I'm throwing out there uh, are schools, academies, sending letters home, asking parents for an extra 20 quid per kid. To, to pay for, you know, after-school clubs and bits and pieces. If you had a letter like that, if you got a letter like that, what would your reaction be? Would you object? Or would you think, no, fair play, let's, uh, let, let, let's contribute, let's make things a little bit easier? 08459 455 555. Another thing we're talking about, Justin, mm. is um, the uh, ding and run. Have you ever dinged somebody's car and then run away? Uh, have I ever done that? Um, I have be hit, honest. I have hit somebody's car before, yep. and they were actually in the car. Oh. And we had a conversation. Mind you, somebody has done <laughs> it to me before. <laughs> yeah, I've just dinged your car, mate. But uh, somebody did it to me about what? I would say four or five years ago, I got a, a relatively new vehicle about two weeks in, and they put a huge mark down the side of my vehicle. I was absolutely furious. In actual fact, um, here's a story from about ten years ago. You're I gonna like this one. It's a classic. You're Number gonna, one from ten years ago. <laughs> You're gonna like this one, guys. Um, I went out and I'd saved money for about two or three years, and I got myself a sports car. It was my pride and joy. Beautiful. I picked it up, I think, on the Wednesday. I took it into work on the Thursday morning, and the first. First day I took it to work, Toby Friedner no. came into the car park, no. who presents on Sunday afternoons. He came into the car park and he went straight into the back of my vehicle and put a massive dent in it. Oh, the first day. Mate. Toby's a decent fella, though. He, he, he yeah, boned yeah. up, didn't he? He didn't try and hide it, did he? 
he did, but did then he? It, no, he owned up, but then of course uh, we have got CCTV, so that's <laughs> why he owned up. Well, I, I, I dinged a car the other day in a car mm. park, and I drove away just. I drove yeah. to the other side of the car park, got out of my car, got in the lift, and I went away. Got to my destination and thought, actually, you, I felt awful. I felt awful. I thought, I can't, I, I've got to go back and do the right thing. I went yeah. back, I started to write a note with my number and stuff. Got to the other person's car, not a scratch on it. <sighs> not a scratch on it. And, and, and I've, I, 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 but ultimately, it boiled down to me thinking, what would I want? And I've had mm. that thing where I've gone back to my car and there's been a huge dent in it and no one's left a note. And I, 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 I went to do the right thing. Well, I know somebody who, who owned up again because the person was in the car and we're talking hardly a mark here, so they gave insurance details and next thing you know, a claim went in for uh, £3,000 worth of damage. That's probably why a lot of people yeah. do walk off nowadays. These fraudulent claims for damage, and the thing that gets me as well is these fraudulent claims for kind of like whiplash and neck injury mm. and back injury and stuff. There's so many of those. Terrible. And it really terrible. annoys me. Mm. 08459 four double five five double five is the phone number if you want to have a say about that or about this the point cinema justin in milton Keynes. we talked about it i think a couple of weeks ago it was up in the air as to what's going to happen well it's going to be knocked down it is councillors on the development control committee voted last night for the uh, dated pyramid to be demolished Justin, we're, we're, before we get to the report, what, what are your personal views about the point? What do you think about it? I know we're supposed to be impartial and stuff, but yeah. I, I'm keen to know what you think of it. Well, I'm standing outside the point right now in Milton Keynes, and um, back in 1985, I'm sure this place was the thing, the first multiplex in the UK, uh, something people were talking about. Yes, it's a landmark, but as I look at it right now, it looks a tatty mess. I'm sure that, that everyone locally will back me up on that. It's, it's like... Like the place that time forgot. Yes, it may be a landmark, but it looks absolutely dreadful. The cinema's still here. Um, there's still a, a bingo hall here as well. But the escape building, which is just across the road, that opened, I believe, in 2002. Uh, that's new. It's fresh. That, again, is iconic. And because that opened, it's almost left the point here to, to go to ruin. And that's exactly what it is, in my opinion. It's a, it's a bit of a mess here. People have... Uh, you've been talking to people this morning. What have they been saying? Yeah, I've been asking people, will they miss... Uh, the point in Milson Keynes, it's going. Here's what people had to say. Well, Anne, the iconic point in Milson Keynes. Yes. Are you going to miss it? No, nope. not at all. Tell me why. Because it's, well, not used. I've only ever been once um, in 15 years. So, really, the might as well put something that's a bit more use than it just standing there. Empty or nearly empty. I mean, is it... Is it a major landmark for Milton Keynes? But by getting rid of that, you're getting rid of a lot of history here, aren't you? Well, it is a landmark, I suppose. But as I say, we got rid of the Will and Whale on Will and Lake. Mm. About time the point went. Well, madam, as somebody who lives in Milton Keynes, will you miss the point at all? Absolutely, because that's the first thing I've actually um, saw when I came here. And as um, my friend here said, you know, it's the perfect meeting for, for everyone. If you say meet you at the point, everyone knows where it is. If you say meet you at Midsummer Place, nobody really cares where, where that is. And also, obviously, the buses go through there, so it's kind of really, really busy place there as well. Um, you've got the cinema, and it's just it's just a really a landmark for, mm. for for people. And it's been here like a like a heritage, I would say, yeah. like a part of the history of the new city. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Fiona, we're, we're looking at the point here. It looks a bit tatty. Are you going to miss this place? Um, no, probably not, because nobody ever goes there. I mean, it's a, a focal point, you know, for, for Milton Keynes, and it was like, you know, obviously when people sort of talk about Milton mm. Keynes, they talk about the point, but everything now is more focused on um, the escape building. And what's your memories of coming here? It's been here since, what, 1985? Have you got some good memories here at the point? Yeah, we um, sort of in my younger days, we all, all used to come up here, just clubbing it and, and that. Quite so. sad what's <laughs> happened, because you've got to admit, it does look rather tatty, rather run down. When you see that, is it quite sad to look at it like that? It is, yeah. It's very sad. I mean, I would have thought that, you know, somebody would have done something about it. 
it just it looks a state and you're right just yeah. i remember when my nan lived in milton Keynes rest her so uh, we used to we never went in there but we used to drive past it and it looked like the future mm. and now it looks very very dated and very t- and it looks tiny as well doesn't it it does it does look tiny compared to the escape building which you can see in the distance it's not too far away as i say back in 1985 this would have been the place it would have been fresh it was very very impressive but but sadly for the point it hasn't really changed since 1985 People have their memories, but can you really keep this place open just because it's a landmark? And and that's what people are saying. Not a lot happens here. Not many people are using it, but of course it is iconic. Is that reason enough to keep this building up? Hey, just you do a music show Saturdays mm. nine till twelve. What's happening this week, please? Uh, this weekend between uh, nine and twelve tomorrow, we have the UK and American charts from this weekend in 1977. Plus Eddie Reader from Fairground Attraction. She picks her favourite musical memories and she'll be singing a cappella for us tomorrow. So don't miss it. Does that mean she doesn't wear any clothes? Yeah, apparently so. Oh, my (laughs) goodness gracious me. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. I've confused that. That's uh, Acapulco. That's Acapulco. It means you do it naked. Irene's in Milton Keynes. Morning, Irene. Morning, Ian. What would you like to say, my dear? Um, Well, at the moment, McIntyre is being... uh, the point what? is being used by McIntyre. Who's McIntyre? McIntyre organisation that um, they cover disabilities, dis- disabled people, and there's a, they've got a catering unit in there. Oh, okay. So they've been doing it for the last year. Well, their other place at Great Home has been done. So okay. If I, I'm angry that people have not even. Oh. Sort of even going there, but they're, they're, but they're, but the, the McIntyre—that's just a temporary arrangement, is it? Well, yeah, but they put their own money in. They done it up. Oh. They put carpets in, chairs in. It would have been a good place for even somewhere else, or even a homeless um, organisation to to set up something. What and have homeless people living in the point? No, not living. Oh. Raising some money and and but why know, would they an organisation do... to do it but rather why... than pull it down? But they'll yeah, be all... okay. Oh, it needs a Hello. lick of paint. Yeah. Oh, it needs more than a lick of paint, Irene. Well, okay, but I I I represent Age UK, right? I'm right. on Age UK. Okay. Which is age concern, as you know. I, I'm, I'm well aware of it, right. and they do Wait excellent work. Yes. But... And I oh. just think that the, the you know the development are not listening. I know it's a bit tired. I remember it when I first came aren't, here. Aren't we all, Irene? <laughs> we all we could all do with a lick of something, couldn't we? Yeah, but you know it is a point. It is a landmark. And they all they seem to think, I know the city they want to bring in people, but they're taking away certain things that isn't good. Yeah. Because they're bringing in, like, like they've got the casino. Yeah. In this um, age of time, you know, with age of time, different yes. things, it's yeah. another good thing for people with that. Uh, but there's, there's nothing money. like a little bit of a gamble, though, is there, to lighten your spirits? Well, no, no, thank you. I don't go there because really? it ruined my life by my partner. Uh, uh, really? Oh, did it really? Was it? Did he have a little bit of a problem? Uh, not a little bit, Ian. Oh, what he happened? Wouldn't want to go there. Uh, well, I, no, I, well, I, 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 you know, I, I am interested if you wanted to say what, what happened. Well, when somebody won a lot, a lot of money, yeah, and then when they they did like horses, yeah, um, and they were gambling loads on it, and by the time eighty nine they won, by nineteen one they got nothing less, and that was in thousands that they won. Oh dear. So oh, it's a very dangerous. It, it's a very dangerous thing. I'm sorry to. I'm sorry that it ruined your life, Irene. And I hope you don't think I was making light no, of it. No, no, I know you wasn't. Okay. But, um, no, I, no, I don't. You know, I'm. I, I, people have got free choice. Yeah. But I think at the moment uh, times are a bit difficult, and I yeah. don't think they should have thought about that. Irene, I really appreciate your call, and thank you for sharing that with us. We've had a comment on Facebook about uh, the Arnold Academy and uh, contributions. I, I may get to that after the weather. I want to speak to Joe in Letchworth for, uh, first. Morning, Joe. Morning, Ian. What, How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you, boss. What you got? Right, first of all, got a couple of things. Yes, I've had my car pranged by three different people in a, in a, in a supermarket car park when I had a nice new car, and it's so depressing when that happens, isn't it? Three different people on the same time? At different dates. Oh, OK. Right, and yeah. it was 
second-hand car, but it was in really nice condition. Within three weeks of going to the supermarket, I had a ding in the bumper, a ding in the side, and then a foot in, in the back door as well. And it was just like, oh, so disheartening. So uh, it, is, it is, you get your car and you go, oh, no. And you look hoping that someone's left a note, but it doesn't. It, it, it very rarely happens. Exactly. So on another note, a more uplifting, because it's been quite sort of depressing today, Ian, um, news-wise. Yep, yep. I want to bring something good to the table, Please okay? do. Scientific research in America, they are trialling um, gene therapy for HIV um, oh. sufferers. Oh, yeah. Where they're taking genetic information from um, what the white blood cells of people who have a natural ba- defence barrier to the, the HIV virus. Yeah. Sorry, the, um, the HIV. And what they're doing, they're putting it into people that are infected, so hopefully these, this gene therapy will spread amongst the cells, genetic information, and combat and um, fight the HIV, which is fantastic. Are you it? telling me that they're working, that, that there is potentially a cure in the, in the works? I, uh, yes. Wouldn't that be great? Is, Ian, gene therapy is such uh, a, the way forward. It has the potential to cure, uh, cure stroke victims, Wowzers. people with HIV, Cancer it is, it, mate. The, the the amount it has to offer is unbelievable. Isn't there an argument from some sides that that gene therapy is perhaps slightly unethical? What's unethical about saving a life and making someone live? Do you know what I mean? You, you, it's the religious side of it, isn't it? Sort of cu- cu- pushing its way in there, if you ask me. It's, it, it needs to be kept back. But they're, 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 I'm guessing they're farming embryos for this, and so some people might argue, not necessarily just the religious people, that actually that's uh, that's a, 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 cross, a bridge too far to cross. But not necessarily saying that's my point of view, but I'm just saying, you know, that, that some people may think it's, that. Um, when, they, when they first started doing gene therapy, that's, yeah, it was, a lot of it was taken from embryos. They've now got new and different ways of getting the same genetic information but without using embryos so it's it's like i say it's it's a, it's a step forward and some weeks we sort of keep pushing we need to keep the ethical side of it but as long as we keep pushing for that i, I can see that we will make astounding breakthroughs in in in, in medical research Joe, very I, very shortly i appreciate you bringing that to it to our attention thank you very much you can call me about anything as i said oh wait four five nine four double five five double five the story i heard about medical science today was they're giving LSD to people who are dying. Apparently the results are amazing. I can tell you exactly what's going to happen. They'll, they'll, they'll think they're seeing God. They'll see loads of patterns and stuff, and they'll think Jimi Hendrix is a good guitarist. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. We've had an update in from Nina. There's been an accident at the Radlett roundabout on the A411. Doesn't seem to be causing any delays on the speed sensors at the moment yet, though. The A5 southbound on the sensors, slow going around Mark Yate. And in Roxton, the A1 southbound looking slow at the Black Cat roundabout. The N25 anti-clockwise, very slow between junction 17 for Maple Cross and 16 for the M40. And the M1 London bound building up between junction 9 for Redbourne and 7 for Hemel Hempstead. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. I'll have an update in a little bit on our listener who has gone vegetarian for two weeks while I've gone carnivorous. But right now it's 7.47. It's Friday the 7th of March. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. And in sport, the chairman of the Football Association, Greg Dyke, has told the BBC that Jack Wilshere is injury prone. The Arsenal midfielder is out for six weeks with a hairline fracture in his left foot. It's coming up to 7.48. Let's get the weather with Elizabeth Rizzini. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hello, a very good morning to you. We're all set for a really, uh, really nice weekend. It's going to be dry and mostly fine, but there is going to be a little bit of cloudy, drizzly weather around today. That's going to edge in from the northwest after the next couple of hours or so. So even if the skies are bright where you are at the moment, the cloud will thicken through the morning. Eventually, we'll start to see some outbreaks of just very light, patchy rain, a little bit of drizzle, uh, particularly over the tops of the Chilterns, I think. But uh, many of us just seen quite a lot of low cloud around, and then that cloud will tend to thin 
afternoon and break as we head into the afternoon. So we're going to be left with a lovely end to the day, at least uh, with some brightness and sunshine around and top temperatures today up to uh, 14 degrees Celsius. Might even see slightly higher than that, perhaps over parts of Hertfordshire in particular. So uh, all in all, it's not going to be a bad end to the day, even if it is quite a grey and a drizzly morning. Now, as we head through into this evening and overnight, then it will be clear for a time. Temperatures cooler than they were last night. Towards northern areas, we could perhaps see three or four degrees Celsius, but then we've got cloud rolling in again from the south as we head into tomorrow morning. So again, a bit of a cloudy start to the weekend, but stick with it. That cloud will thin and break into the afternoon and we'll see some lovely spells of sunshine around temperatures all the way up to 15 degrees, perhaps. By the time we get to Sunday, we could be looking at 16 or 17 degrees Celsius, 63 in Fahrenheit. There'll be lots of blue skies and sunshine around. So all in all, it's not a bad end to the week at all. And the high pressure is set to stay with us into next week. We're looking at some sunny days, some rather chilly nights, though. That's the forecast. Every weekday morning. The shop didn't want to give me them back, so I went to the shop, paid them a fee to get my cylinders back. The JVS Show fights for your rights and tackles your consumer problems. I went to speak to this company and I asked them what had happened. It took me absolutely ages to get through to anyone. If you need our help, email jvsshow at bbc.co.uk. After I left discussion about my cylinders, the, the governing body showed up at my house on the following day. And we could do the same for you. Thanks, Denise. And for the company for getting her cooker back up and running, here's your horn. The JVS Show, weekday mornings from nine on BBC Three Counties Radio. Uh, Jamie, Suzanne, stay there uh, and uh, get to you in a second. Um, just in regards to this school, the Arnold Academy, Academy in Barton, which has been asking for contributions of £20 per pupil up to a maximum of £40. Asking for your thoughts on that. Uh, Well, Julia has messaged me on Facebook. I'm a parent of a child at Arnold Academy and completely support the request for voluntary contributions. There is a long tradition of supporting PTAs in lower schools, but support seems to fade away in some middle schools. I think many parents would rather pay in a lump sum what is the cost of a couple of cinema tickets to support the extracurricular activities in a school than attend fundraising events? Mr Kelly, the headmaster, has been at the school for less than two years and has made some really positive changes in that time. I hope he gets lots of contributions in so the Academy can expand the educational opportunities further for our kids. What do you think? 08459 455 555 is the telephone number if you want to give me a call. Um, Jamie's in Dunstable. Morning, Jamie. Morning. What did you call in about? I was calling about the gene therapy. Oh, yeah, we had um, Joe in Letchworth that talked about gene therapy is working towards a cure for, for things like HIV and strokes and things. Yeah, that's the one. Um, in China, they're actually a long way ahead with their gene therapy. Uh, they're, not, they're less concerned with the ethics side of it, and it's, they're, they're at least a decade ahead of the rest of the world. China, less concerned about ethics? No! <laughs> uh, but it's a friend of mine, his friend actually was ter- ter- diagnosed for three months to leave. He had terminal cancer. Yeah. Um, had lots of money, did lots of research and found that if he, he found this um, basic research in China, uh, went over, had the gene therapy and was actually cured um, because they don't have the restrictions that we do over here about what we're allowed to do and not allowed to do. Um, and yeah. they're a long way ahead. So there's, there is there is definitely light at the end of the tunnel. It is, it is, we have strong, uh, the strong ethical restrictions on what we're allowed to do with gene therapy. But if you Google it, there's loads of science behind it as well. It's really interesting. But what about the ethical argument, Jamie? And I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not too hot on this. This has been thrown at me, and I'll be honest, gene therapy I don't know a lot about. But there are people who argue that you are um, kind of messing with nature, that you're taking stuff from embryos. Is that unethical? Um, it, depend, I, it depends on your, on, your, on your... I think it's more of a religious standpoint of view. I don't think it is, because it's, it's an embryo. So it's not a life, it's just an embryo. So, uh, I don't think it's wrong, um, but... Jay, Jamie, I, I appreciate your call. What, if you don't mind me asking, what happened to your friend who was, was poorly? He's fine. Oh. He went back... To, yeah, he's absolutely fine. He went over, went through the whole lot. A year later, he went back to doctors over here and absolutely fine. And he was given three months to live? Yeah. Well, well, well. Isn't that incredible? It is. Um, it's quite Isn't that incredible? Close, it's quite close to my heart, because really, he's got the same cancer as my dad. Right. Um, so what, was, do, um, do you mind me asking what cancer it was? Um, it was it was a lung cancer. Right, right, absolutely incredible, Jamie. I really appreciate that story. Thank you very much. 
You can't argue with that. Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm literally at the precipice of my knowledge here. Gene therapy. Um, I know the band Gene. I know the band therapy. The concept of gene therapy, I don't know that much about. So I persu- can be persuaded either way. Suzanne's in North Hants. Morning, Suzanne. Hi, good morning. What would you like to say? Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Beautiful. Let's um, have a what conversation. What I want to say is, um, you know, there's always good and there's always bad, whether we like it or not. I mean, yep. we hear it on the news all the time, positives and negatives. Yes. Um, gene therapy, um, finding a cure for HIV, I think that's fantastic. Um, the problem is, it's not just a religious um, um, thing if people are concerned about ethics and morality. I mean, you don't have to be a Christian or a Muslim or any other religion. It's just um, protecting other human beings. If you call that religion, then that's what it is. Protecting the, the integrity and the virtue and values of others and of the other, the other members of the human race. Yes, gene therapy could be positive um, in the sense that there are cures for... It saved that disease. fella's mate's life. He had three months to live and now he's fine. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that everything needs to have some boundaries. If we have fire without boundaries, we'd have issues. If we have water without boundaries, we've seen what um, lack of boundaries or proper regulations does in this country with flooding because of water. Uh, Water's not not bad. Yes, well, let's... Yeah, I know, but hang on. Let's let's not confuse the the flooding with with gene therapy because I'm I'm already struggling to get get a grasp on this anyway and I can't quite see the the connection. So what is bad? Tell me what's bad about gene therapy then. Um... Well, it's 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 when you start. Um, you see, you can have. It's the same as what was what Hitler was doing. What? He was looking at yes. He was looking at certain uh, races or certain traits and and, and um, supporting them as opposed to others. It, it, it's in some countries. People don't want girls. People want boys. But but that's, you know, that, I don't think that's that, that, that. What's that got to do with the cure for HIV, cancer, and yeah, strokes? But, but what I'm saying is that there needs to be regulations and there needs to be boundaries. Suzanne, but you, I, I'm struggling to understand what you, you, you you've mentioned floods, you've mentioned fire, you've mentioned Hitler. Yes. What's bad about gene therapy? No, it, 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 what I'm saying is gene therapy is good if the the source of um, or the research into the genetics doesn't compromise other areas of 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 um, human being that's where the ethical and the moral issues come up and how and how would it tell me how you're worried it could compromise things um well uh, stem cells etc if you go into research if you go into onto the internet you can find there i'm not i'm not on the internet i'm talking to you so do do you tell me what's what's wrong what's bad about it there are a lot there's a lot of research on um setting boundi- boundaries on regulatory issues relating okay. to gene therapy and stem cell um, research. I so, mean, it's not a new thing. Suzanne, I'm going to ask you... For, I'm going to ask you, going I'm going to ask you on. again. It's the fifth time I'm asking you, and I really hope you can give me an answer, a direct answer. What is bad about gene therapy? Sometimes it depends on how, um, how the research is carried out. And sometimes it's about the boundaries that are set for research. OK. I'm, I'm yeah. going to move on because I, 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 I felt I wasn't getting an answer. Maybe I was misunderstanding you, Suzanne. I appreciate your call. Like I've said, I'm at the boundaries of my knowledge here. I felt like I wasn't getting a direct answer from Suzanne. Is that unfair of me? I asked the question, I think, four or five times. What is so bad about gene therapy? We, we heard about floods. We heard about fire. We heard about Hitler. We heard about boundaries. I still don't know what's so bad about gene therapy. I'm not being flippant. I don't know much about it. Isn't it funny when the show go, go, goes off on a tangent? I like that. I like that a lot. Joyce is in Lee Grave. Morning, Joyce. Oh, good morning. What morning. was that to say? Hello. Uh, yes. Um, I'm visually impaired, and the thing being, it must have been in our local papers, because I get um, from Sight Concern, they do me a talking newspaper on an old-fashioned tape. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Good. Like uh, a cassette? <laughs> That's correct. Yes, thank you. Right, so I can always reverse it and listen to it again if I want to. Yes. Uh, anyway, just to let you know that I picked it up off there, and I tried to, well, I wrote all the names down, actually. Yes. Um, from America, this consultant came to uh, Bedford, and they really found a way to put stem cells yes. behind the eye. Oh. Now, into the retina yes. to help you 
keep your vision or yeah. do whatever. It's a new thing. Yeah. But the thing is, um, it wasn't... Um, uh, they know about it in England, but it's not actually happening uh, in England yet. And one cannot pay if one can afford it. For... Would you have it done, Joyce? If you could, would you go and get it done? Yes, I would. Joyce, there you go. There's your answer. Oh, eight four five nine four double five five double five. I, I, isn't it weird we've gone off on this tangent? I've just seen what uh, my colleague Matt Lockwood has, has tweeted. It's amazing what people call Ian Lee about this morning. It's gene therapy. Uh, and I, I guess if I had, and we're running out of time, so I've got to go to travel, but if I had cancer or MS or one of these things that could be cured by it, I'd be totally up for it. Wouldn't you? Absolutely. Don't you remember Christopher Reeve was trying yep. to campaign for it? Yes, he was. Oh, eight four five nine four double five five double five. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Hamel Hempstead, the A414 eastbound is closed because of vehicles overturned at the M1 Junction 7. In Hitchin, the A505 heading towards the centre of town, looking slow on the speed sensors. And also in Clop Hill, approaching the roundabout on the A507 is struggling. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Alice, thank you. I've been very naughty and not giving you enough time recently, so well done for squeezing in. It's appreciated. Well... Turns out we're talking about gene therapy. Who'd have thought it? What's wrong with gene therapy? Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's eight o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, Buckinghamshire woman could face appeal court challenge to frozen sperm ruling. Milton Keynes councillors vote to demolish the point and conman builder who went on the run is finally jailed. BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority has ten days to decide whether to appeal. The initial ruling means that 28-year-old Beth Warren can keep the sperm in storage for up to 55 years. Her lawyer is James Lawford Davis. It was an extremely difficult afternoon, so after the elation, um, it, it, it really felt very disappointing and frustrating that it's still hanging over her now. I, I think the wider implications are actually very limited, um, but that's their main reason for thinking about it. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. The Point was built in 1985 and was one of the first multiplex cinemas in the UK. Mixed views from these people in Milton Keynes this morning. I've only ever been once in 15 years. So, really, they might as well put something that's a bit more use. You know, it's the perfect meeting point for everyone. If you say meet you at the point, everyone knows where it is. If you say meet you at Midsummer Place, nobody really cares where, where that is. I mean, it's a, a focal point, you know, for, for Milton Keynes, and it's like when people talk about Milton mm. Keynes, they talk about the point. But everything now is more focused on the escape building. David Cameron is in Bedfordshire this morning. The Prime Minister will be promoting the Help to Buy scheme. Downing Street says 375 people in Bedfordshire have bought a house through the scheme with central Bedfordshire the fourth highest place in the country for equity loan sales. The father of the murdered black teenager Stephen Lawrence has said he has no trust in the Metropolitan Police. Neville Lawrence was speaking after the government ordered a judge-led inquiry into undercover policing. A review by a senior barrister found that an officer infiltrated the Lawrence family campaign for justice and there were reasonable grounds to suspect one detective of corruption. A builder from Aylesbury who conned a vulnerable widow out of half a million pounds has been caught after going on the run. John Jenkins has now had an extra two weeks added to his six-year sentence for fraud. More from Jane Killick. The 70-year-old had already been found guilty of stealing a huge amount of money from Josephine Stubbings when he fled to Jersey and hid in a hotel. There he took an overdose and ended up in hospital where he told staff he was wanted by the police. Arriving back on the mainland, he managed to take another overdose and woke up in hospital for a second time. Jenkins, from Poets Chase in Aylesbury, was arrested at the hospital and taken back to court for sentencing. President Obama has spoken to Russia's President Vladimir Putin to urge him to help find a diplomatic solution to the crisis in Ukraine. The Paralympic Winter Games open this afternoon in the Russian resort of Sochi. The Ukrainian team will decide later today whether to take part. In sport, Dean Bowditch could return to the MK Don squad for tomorrow trip to Swindon, but Luton will be without Luke Guttridge for the away game at Salisbury. The weather cloudy with
with the chance of some patchy light rain this morning, but sunnier this afternoon, a maximum temperature 14 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. It's just a great place to be. Inviting everyone to where you live. The parks, they're absolutely lovely. The Addison Howard Park and we've got a river here, so it's lovely and the people are always friendly. And all this week, we're featuring Kempston. You get everything here, they've got more or less everything here that you need. Kempston is great. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Simon. Excellent stuff, as always. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, isn't it funny? You start the show with all these ideas of what you're going to talk about and where you're going to go and what you're going to do. And then a caller phones in with something completely random. Whoosh, you're off on a tangent. That's why I like doing this show so much. You can plan it to uh, until you know exactly where you're going, but all it takes is one random phone call... And you're talking about something, talking about something I don't know anything about. We will be talking later on in the show to the woman who has won the right to keep her dead husband's frozen sperm for another 50 years. The point in Milton Keynes, it's being knocked down. Sing hosannas at last. Sense has been seen. They're getting rid of that atrocious, awful relic from the 1980s. And here's something... Joe in Letchworth called in about gene therapy, the work they're doing in the United States. They're working on a cure for HIV using gene therapy. He says it could cure strokes, cancer. We've heard a call from someone whose um, friend's cancer was cured with it. I don't know a lot about it, if I'm completely honest. I've not genned up on this one. So we're, we're walking hands in the dark along the precipice of knowledge. There are some people who argue that gene therapy is... Well, it's bad, it's wrong, it's unethical. We had one caller who tried to explain it. I didn't quite get the point she was making. I didn't quite get where she was going. So what are your... I guess the question is, if you were ill and there was a cure that was based on gene therapy, would you take it? And I think everybody would say yes, wouldn't you? Would you turn down treatment because it was, in your eyes, unethical? Facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR. You can text 81333, start your text 3CR, or you can give me a call 08459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. I get it. It's a simple question, is, isn't it? If you've got cancer or MS or a stroke or any of these things that we are being told you could cure through uh, gene therapy... Would you bother? Would, would it bother you that you know maybe your medicine had come from an embryo? I could live with that. I could live I with that. I think if you were in that situation, you would, you would, you would grasp at any opportunity you had. At the same time, I know people. You know, they're just pregnant. That baby is a baby, and it's at the yeah. same stage of uh, development. You know. How, what, d- 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 I'm going to ask a question that sounds silly, but there is kind of a. But what exactly is an embryo? How, I mean, where, where are we? An embryo we? is a, an egg that's been fertilised, so and it's that's it. To, well, yeah, but it started to develop as a human being, so it's not just a, a, an unfertilised. I mean, how far into the pregnancy are we talking? I mean, it's like early, early days. It's very, very early. On. There's no, it's not arms and legs and, and eyes and things. It's not, it's not a sentient being. No, but it has the potential to be. one. Has the potential to be a sentient being, but then so does you know, so does sperm. It has the potential to be a sentient being. And look what we do to those every day. Uh, but it, it, Speak for yourself. I know. That, for example, my mum's got MS. For example, if someone said we have got a, a treatment for her that means she can walk and feed herself again, but it's come from um, from from embryos, I'd go. Yeah, when can she have it? Of when she when would. does she get the injection? Where, where where do we go? How much? Of course, she would. But I think there'd be very little you wouldn't do for a yeah. loved one who was suffering like that. Yeah. Uh, let's put it out there. It's funny, isn't it? We, we weren't planning on talking on this at all, and, and we've said if this had been raised in the meeting yesterday, we've gone, yeah, uh, anyone got anything else? 08459 oh, four double five five double five. If you were offered a treatment that could cure you or your loved ones, but it, the treatment had been sourced, the medicine had been sourced from embryos, you wouldn't say no, would you? There'd be no one that would say no. 
08459 four double five five double five. Hey kids, good news. Good and it is good news. I genuinely believe this. The point is being taken down in Milton Keynes. Sometimes we get too sentimental about buildings. Yeah, be sentimental about St Paul's Cathedral. Yeah, be sentimental about, um, oh, oh, I don't know, the Windsor Castle. But the point in Milton Keynes? No. It's not the place for sentimentality. It's a place to rip it down and build something decent. Peter's in Wolverton. Peter, you have to agree with this, don't you? <laughs> Good morning, uh, Ian. Peace be with you, brother. Thank you very much, boss. The, um... Uh, I was just saying to uh, your researcher that the uh, point uh, was the focus of a short story uh, competition in the late 80s, and the prize was £100, and uh, the winner was uh, actually predicted the demise of the point. And the the prize was donated by J.R. Keating, the detective uh, novelist. Um, I won third prize with a crazy story from a bottle of whiskey, so that wasn't bad. Hey, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> That'll do. What, now, was your, what was your story about, Peter? Uh, it was about a murder, but it was a really involved plot. Oh. Oh. Hey, Peter, you know I've started eating meat just for two weeks... Yes. After 25 years of vegetarian, I, I'm uh, experimenting with meat for two weeks. I've put the ethical argument to one side. I'm not even dwelling on it. I'll look at that at the, the, the end of two weeks. But by the end of those two weeks, by the way, kids, I'll be in New York City. What a place to contemplate my future. Anyway, t- to balance up the planet, we've asked um, one of our listeners, Ian Gray, to become a vegetarian for the two weeks. And yeah. Catherine, he's doing a good job, isn't he? He's really thrown himself into it. He is bullhorns I mean, grab. Let's not say he's gone straight for the lentils and tofu, no. because yesterday he started out with a fried egg sandwich. Yeah. That's well, OK. That's fine. That's within the rules. That's OK. We're not asking him to be vegan. We're not asking him to be crazy. And then last night he had a stir-fry. <laughs> this morning for breakfast he's got a sad banana. I do suggest, dear listener, if you're on Twitter, um, 90, at 1987 underscore Ian, I-A-N. He spells it wrong, but let's not hold it, hold it against him. At 1987 underscore He's tweeting pictures of every single meal. And he's got a sad banana this morning. Although it is smiling. It I said is to smiling. Him. But well, Ian, well done, mate. We'll speak, let's speak to Ian on Monday, shall we, and find out how the weekend was, because be that, that will bring temptation his way, I'm sure. But good work. Uh, Peter, what else did you want to say? Uh, ding and run. Um, a, a chap in a car park a few years ago yes. was ranting and raving and holding this piece of paper. So I was just a few yards away. I went up. Uh, what's, the, what's the matter, mate? Is, is there something wrong? Look at this. And somebody had put a huge dent on the side of his vehicle, and the note on the windscreen read something like, um, uh, I've just dented your vehicle. I'm being watched writing this note. Oh, no. Exactly. My wife had the same thing once. Cowards, cowards. Yeah, absolutely disgraceful. And as for the gene therapy, yeah. um, if there is this panacea of cure for all ills, it cannot be a bad thing, can it? Peter, thank you very much indeed. The, I, I like the fact that ding and run, ding and run is becoming a phrase yeah. now. And it is. It's, it's, for those who've missed the beginning of the show, the ding and run is where you hit someone's car when they're not in it and you just scarper. I did it. I did it the other day. I went back, though, to leave a note, and I found out to my great relief that their car had not been damaged in the slightest. Can we just explain the, uh, the what a ding is? A ding is less than a bump oh, yeah. and way less than a crash. Oh, it's, it's nowhere near. You're not, you're not, it's not even in the same book as it's crash. It's not even a scrape, is it? No, it's, it's, a, it's a ding. It could leave a little dentage. It can leave a little um, uh, um, uh, scuffage. It could just be a bumper to bumper. Yeah. Like Grace Jones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lynn's in Hazelmere. Morning, Lynn. Good morning, Ian. What you got for me? Well, um, I used to be nursing. I'm not nursing now. No. But when I was um, nursing, there was a lot of talk about this um, gene therapy. And from what I remember, they only use the um, umbilical cord. Um, they take inject into the umbilical cord and take out the stem cells. It's more technical. Than Catherine that, Boyle, well, Lynn, Catherine Boyle has just rushed in. She was um, off, and I don't think she'll mind me saying this. She was off to have a wee, and she's just rushed, rushed in, stuck her finger up in the air to say, um, "I know something about this." When I had my babies, I gave permission for them to take cells from their. Did you really from their cords because it can be used to help them in future. It's, it's such a good thing. But then why, if it's, if it's just from uh, umbilical cords, some people say umbilical. 
Oh, I hate those people. Oh, if it's just from uh, from umbilical cords, the umbilical cord's weird, isn't it? It's like this sort of plastic tube. Yes, yeah, like a if, if, if you're gonna, sausage. If you're going to siphon um, petrol out of a car tank, you could you could feasibly use an umbilical cord, uh, but that would mean putting it in your mouth and sucking it. I'm sorry, but if it's just from umbilical cords, it's that coffee, man. <laughs> Why are we talking about embryos then? Did it's they, not just, is it? It's uh, okay. just another thing that they can. Okay, do. so it come it can come from embryos as well. Mm-hmm. And is that a problem for you, Lynn? It, it, it coming from um, embryos? I think it depends. If uh, if. If the team are open and honest with the person that's lost, the, you know, had the miscarriage very early on, right? I think most people would say, yes, that's fine, um, you know, f- for medical science. A lot of people want to do that. I think the problem comes when they do it without asking. Yeah, of course. And I think that's a different issue. But, I mean, I think most of us would say, yes, please do, you know, but I think, you, you know, not everybody's the same. Um, and I think our, our ethical committee in this country is way more... Um, Oh, what's the word? <clears throat> We're a lot hotter on it than America. Yeah. Drugs come out quicker in America. Ours take five years to, you know, we check everything, everything, everything. And I suppose that in some ways that's good that we, we do check things that we make, you know, because we, we don't want these things to be rushed. Uh, you know, we have to have thorough tests, but it, it also I, I, we've all heard stories of people with uh, various diseases and the drugs are freely available in America, but they're not getting them over here. That happens all the time, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. But I think also money is an issue, and it's not such an issue in America, whereas our NHS only has X amount of funding for this or that, and that, you know, our NHS is, is quite strapped for cash, isn't it? So I Lynn- suppose something's got to go somewhere, whether it's research or cancer mm. research or whatever. Um, on the issue of uh, vegetarian, yes, we used to be vegetarian for many years. I think I've talked to you about this before. Yeah. And we're now meat eaters. And what turned you? Uh, my son, when he was about seven months, he just started walking. Yeah. And we were at a friend's house, and um, he got in the fridge and came out with a handful of ham. And, you know, yummy, yummy, yummy. Mm. And I just thought, oh, I'm a really terrible mother. Mm. I've not been given to <laughs> me. I had my first yeah. bacon sandwich of 25 years yesterday. Oh, no, shame, but it's lovely. Oh, it? my, my Lynn, oh, the, it, it, it's wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. In Helmer Hempstead, the A414 is closed at the M1 Junction 7 because a vehicle is overturned, causing delays on the approach as well. In Hartford, things are slow between the A10 and the centre of town on the A414, that's towards the centre of Hartford. And on the M1 between Junction 10 for Luton and 10A for the Kidneywood Roundabout, very slow heading towards Luton. We've also got queues on the London Road approaching the Kidneywood Roundabout. The M25 anti-clockwise heavy between Junction 17 for Maple Cross and 16 for the M40. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. 8.16. It's Friday, the 7th of March. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. And in sport, Joe Root will miss England's 2020 matches against the West Indies after breaking his right thumb in Wednesday's One Day International in Antigua. BBC Three Counties Radio. Five local teams. 25 goals for the season for Andre Gray. All in one place. Luke Freeman has done it again and Stevenage in the lead. Tomorrow, Three Counties Sport brings you live commentary on MK Dons, Stevenage, Wickham, Luton and Bedford Blues. And Morris will get to it first and score. And Bedford back into it. Uninterrupted commentary on your local team. Wickham lead. They've been pressing. In towards Isaac McCann. Long way Devon coming in. It's in the back of the net. Three Counties Sport, tomorrow from 2 on BBC Three Counties Radio. What on earth is... Tim, what are you... Tim, out! See you later. What? What was that all about? He's just changing my script so uh, we don't get sued, I think. Your script? Yes. What? Oh, yes. Everything I say is scripted, including this. I know. Let me just turn the page. (laughs) 
I know, Jonathan, but you do it so naturally. I know, you'd never guess. What's on your show this morning? Coming up on the big phone in this morning, I'm asking, do you trust the police? It's on virtually every front page this morning. Doreen Lawrence, mother of murdered teenager Stephen Lawrence, says you can't trust the police. After it took 19 years for her son's killers to be brought to justice, a review into the investigation of his death has now revealed the Lawrence family was spied on by undercover police throughout the 1990s. Weeks ago, the family of Mark Duggan protested outside court as his shooting was declared lawful. They don't believe he got justice. And days ago, a public meeting in Luton's Berry Park boiled over as the community are seeking justice for Farouk Ali, an autistic man allegedly assaulted in police custody. Well, I just wonder how cases like this affect the way we all feel about the police. From nine this morning, I want your views. Do you trust the police? 08459 455 555. Your views, your experiences on the big phone in this morning from nine. I don't know if you heard uh, Doreen Lawrence speaking yesterday. What a remarkable woman. Mm. She has every right to be furious and to, you know, have pointed the finger and shouted, and I just thought she was so dignified and calm, and I thought, you know, an example to us all, really. Well, she's been dignified and calm throughout, hasn't she? She's been great. Absolutely. Mm. But I... I just wonder, with cases like this, when we seem to hear more of these cases, mm. are they chipping away at our trust in the police? Or, or do most people feel, you know what, these are very isolated? And if mm. there is any kind of racism, if there is any wrongdoing in the police, it's a very small minority, as you would find in any big organisation, and it's unfair to tar everybody else in the same way. Mm. Uh, I think the only way we're going to get a good picture is for people to phone in this morning from nine with their views and their experiences. If you've had dealings with the police, what do you think? Do you trust them? 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Excellent stuff. I mean, Doreen Lawrence, Doreen Lawrence yesterday, incredible example of uh, how to act dignified and uh, in a moment like that. Well done, her. Now, a story we've been talking about uh, the last couple of days, a Newport Pagnell woman who was fighting to keep her dead husband's frozen sperm. There's a sentence. Um, but it was due to be destroyed in uh, April of next year. Well, she's won her court case. She can keep it for longer. Warren Brewer put a sample of his sperm into storage before beginning cancer treatment back in 2005. His wife, Beth, argued he'd done everything he could to ensure she could use it as and when she felt ready. Well, Beth's jo- joining me on the line now. Morning, Beth. Good morning. And, uh, you're quite the um, the showbiz world you're leaving. I, I, uh, living. I believe you've just uh, been on Daybreak this morning. And... Daybreak twice and three radio. You're the fourth. Well, so. thank you very much. And you've been in all the papers... We'll get to the twist in the tale in a little bit, but but mm-hmm. first of all, I guess, congratulations. Yes, thank you. I was following this on Twitter, and I was so pleased when I, it, it popped up on my screen, Beth Warren has won her case. How exactly did you get the news? What, what's it like in the High Court, and what happened? Um, we Well, first of all, I was told I was allowed to be told a few minutes before, but that my solicitor, James, couldn't know alongside me, so I said I didn't want to know without him. Um, he's done everything with me, and I thought, I can't know on my own. So I waited for High Court, and then it was within minutes Mrs Justice Hogg said it, and I couldn't believe it. I, as I said to you, I was so incredibly nervous. I didn't know which way it was going to go. I hadn't let myself believe that it might go our way. Mm. And to hear those words, oh, my goodness, just can't describe. It's the happiest thing I could have heard, and I have not felt that happy in a long time. Isn't it odd they, they, they could tell you before but not your solicitor? What a strange quirk of the law. It is, yeah. I think a lot of it's down to what the judge says mm. and it's the case and... But that was what we said. I was given the option anyway, which I think I need to appreciate. But for me, I thought James has been by my side and I couldn't hear it. I couldn't not look at him, to be honest. I could never bluff to James. So, um, no, I said, I'll wait. And I'm so glad I did. To hear it surrounded by my family and friends and side by side by James was amazing. I have to say, Beth... It, it sounds like we're talking to a completely different woman, to the, the, the nervous, anxious woman that we spoke to yesterday. You sound so much more relaxed. Oh, I'm on an emotional roller coaster, yeah. being so incredibly nervous to over the moon to, as we said, that twist, that two hours later being told. Well, this is, this is the twist, that the, the uh, Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority have been given the chance to take this to the Court of Appeal. Did that, did that come out of nowhere? Because, as you say, you, that announcement was made a couple of hours later. Yeah, of course I realise either side can appeal, but it just hadn't even crossed my mind. I'd won. 
I came out, I was talking about it to media after media and thinking, that's it, I'm, I was starting to plan my future in my head. It's like given that winning lottery ticket and thinking, oh my goodness, this is it now. Um, I hadn't even, I, I guess, it, well, of course it was an option, but I was so swept up in thinking we'd won, I didn't have to fight anymore. And then to hear that, oh my goodness, my heart dropped and... I'm trying to pick myself up from that. Mm. You, and you, the roller coaster, I think, is exactly the right word for, for, mm. for what you're, you're going through. They've got 10 days, I think, to decide whether they're going to appeal. That's right. They wanted a full 21, but we've managed to bridge that down. My barrister's brilliant in asking for it to be shorter. Still must be... Uh, th- 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 it's going to be tense, isn't it, for you? It is. I'm trying to keep hold of that happiness of the win, but I can't... It's in a way, it's not, it's not over yet, is it? So how can, I can't start planning my future anymore. It's all on hold again. I'm just hoping that they don't appeal. It's just that they ask and within 10 days they change their mind. Well, they're worried, aren't they, that, uh, that, that your case could set an unhealthy precedent for, for other uh, potential cases in the future. What are your thoughts on that, Beth? Of course, the problem with mine is that they're saying that um, Warren needs to give more consent for continued storage because the consent forms for storage are separate to consenting for posthumous conception. So all they need to do is change either legislation or just merely the paperwork they give to people. If someone's storing their sperm because they have cancer and they might, may die and they agree to posthumous conception, there needs to be that option for them to pass over, not only for their partner to be able to conceive, but to be able to keep it stored. If they change the paperwork, there's no problem. That's it. There really isn't. It does feel, watching from the outside, it does feel that uh, if, if they do take this to appeal, then the HFEA is, is, is being slightly cruel, I guess, in a way. It, it, it seems particularly unpleasant. If it goes to appeal, obviously, then you, you kind of have to fight it again. If you lost the appeal, and you know, we're throwing this out into the future, yeah. if, you, if, you, if you lost the appeal and they won, would you carry on fighting, do you think? Has, has yesterday given you, given you more strength? I think it gave me the whole world of strength to hear that I'd won, but I really, I don't want to keep fighting. I'm emotionally, physically drained. I want to move forward, and there's only so long that you can fight anything in life, but at the same time, when you want anything enough, when it's that important, how do you stop? Um, I don't know. I'm trying to get my head around it. What did, uh, did you, I'm assuming you spoke to Warren's family yes. yesterday. What did they say? Um... Well, obviously they're in court with me. Everyone was over the moon. We got that news, happy tears everywhere. Um, and then to phone up, I spoke to Warren's dad to tell him that two hours later they'd left. Um, they'd tell, passing the news on to everyone else um, to tell them that there may be an appeal. Warren's dad was great. He said that you know, he's sure that wouldn't happen. He's, you know, we're trying to stay positive, but that was, that was tough. <laughs> I bet it was. Listen, en- enjoy the success for yeah. the moment and, and, and let's see how we the did next amazingly, week... amazingly. So. Yeah, you did do incredibly. And you're right, your solicitor, we, we've had on the show a couple of times, it sounds like he did, he did a superb job. Enjoy the success. He's amazing. <laughs> You've got, you, and let's, let's just hope these 10 days go and, and, and uh, HFEA realise, you know, to let it go. Mm-hmm. Beth, thanks very much. I'm sure you've got a busy day ahead of you, so, you. so enjoy it. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks, Ian. There we go, it's Beth it's, uh, Warren. Oh, I, I, it, it, it was very. It was so exciting yesterday when it popped up on my Twitter feed timeline. What do you call it? I don't know. That she'd won. I was like a little bit. Oh, I know her. I know her. She's done really well. I was very excited for her. Then two or three hours later, oh yeah, they might appeal. Oh right, okay. Come on, the HFEA. Let it go. Let it go. Tell her today you're going to let it go for goodness sakes. Give give the woman a break. She's had a terrible journey as it is. Let it go. Bizarrely this morning, after apropos very little, a call from Jay and Letchworth. We're talking about gene therapy. He's very excited. Not the bass player. Uh, Joe and Letchworth, Letchworth is it? Uh, what did I say? Who did I say? Did I say Jay? Oh, I, 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 I apologise. Joe, I said, if you type something on a screen, I'll read it because I'm an idiot. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I read. I said Jay, and it was it was Joe that I was talking about because Jay was typed on the screen. So let's get going. Jay, yes. Hi. Good morning, Ian. Morning, Jay. This is Jay from Harpenden. No, you're not. Let me just cu- clarify. You're not Joe. No, okay. I am Jay. Excellent. From right. Harpenden. Excellent stuff. What have you got for us? Good morning. A gene therapy is not bad, and I am going to tell you why it's not bad. Tell me why. Because. If you can have organ donors and people are crying out loud to donate organs, why can't gene therapy be 
another way forward. It's similar. It's cells. It's genes to grow organs or any other cells in your body which are not working properly. So, A, it's not moral. B, it's life-saving, and I am all for it. It's not bad at all. But we've had some people this morning, and I, I, the, the woman we spoke to struggled, to, in my yeah. mind, to make a coherent argument, but some people do think it's bad, or has the potential right. to be bad. The only one potential that can be bad is cloning, like we had the sheep called Dolly. Yes. If you're going to clone a whole person, and in her argument, I think she tried to make a point by saying if it was a Hitler or people in power cloned again may be detrimental to the human race. But besides that, we're looking at it for making people better, then I think gene therapy is the way forward. And like your mum, I would have wished it was around for my mother. Mm. 100% go forward. Jay and Harpenden, not Joe and Letchworth, I appreciate your call. 08459 four double five five double five. Let's get the travel news now. Here's Alice Glossop. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The A1 northbound is closed between the Sandy Roundabout and Bolnham because a horse box has broken down, but it's not causing any delays on the speed sensors at the moment. But there are some delays in Bedford on the Bromham Road. That's slow going towards the centre of town. And in Hemel Hempstead, the A414 is closed at the M1 Junction 7 because a vehicle has overturned and that is causing delays at the moment. In Hewenden Valley, the Halley Valley Road sorry, is slow approaching High Wycombe. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 8.30, I'm Simon Oxley, a woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority has 10 days to decide whether to appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. And David Cameron is in Bedfordshire this morning. The Prime Minister will be promoting the Help to Buy scheme Downing Street says 375 people in Bedfordshire have bought a house through the scheme. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Dean Bowditch could return to the MK Don squad for tomorrow's trip to Swindon with manager Carl Robinson promising changes to personnel and formation. Yeah, I'm looking to make two or three changes for Saturday. Um, I think some players need a rest, some players need to have a re- realisation of where they're at. Um, so there'll be some impact changes, yes. And uh, we do feel we're going to go there. We're going to change the shape. We're going to change one or two things to the shape. So we're going to uh, we're going to try and challenge Swind in a different way. Also in League One, Stevenage face a key game in their relegation battle as they host fellow strugglers Tranmere. Wickham skipper Stuart Lewis remains a doubt for the League Two match at home to Hartlepool as he continues his recovery from a hamstring problem. And conference leaders Luton will head to Salisbury tomorrow without Luke Guttridge. The midfielder was injured in last week's win over Alfreton. Manager John Still is waiting for a full diagnosis. Uh, Luke Guttridge uh, came off injured. We don't know exactly yet there is damage to his ankle, but we, we, you know, we, we don't really know too much yet. I think we'll, we'll know a bit more probably Monday, Tuesday. We don't know 100% at the moment. The chairman of the Football Association, Greg Dyke, has told the BBC that Jack Wilshire is injury-prone and probably made the wrong decision to play on against Denmark on Wednesday. The Arsenal midfielder is out for six weeks with a hairline fracture in his left foot. And England batsman Joe Root has been ruled out of the rest of the tour of the West Indies with a broken thumb. Root is flying home and could miss the World T20 in Bangladesh later this month. BBC Three Counties News and Sports. The next full bulletin is at nine. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Oh, I left my travel fader open that time. It's first time in a few weeks. I do apologise, I do apologise. 08459 four double five five double five is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. Uh, lots to talk about this morning, including gene therapy and calling Dingham Runs, uh, schools, all kinds of things. Very, very busy this morning. Lots of phone calls, so thank you very much indeed. Uh, you can also go to facebook.com forward slash BBC 3CR and we had a call from a very grumpy gentleman earlier and I don't quite know what his beef was 
I tried to charm him with, uh, with, with charm and, and wit. He was having none of it. We've tweeted it. Uh, so if you follow at BBC3CR or at Ian Lee, uh, then you can, uh, you can go and find it and have a little listen to that. Uh, we've got Peter on the line. Morning, Peter. Morning. Peter in Leighton Buzzer, what would you like to say? I was just saying about these um, sump holes in Hemel Hempstead. The, the sump holes? That um, hole, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, well, I backfilled one years ago. Yes. Up by the water tower in Hemel. Oh, yes. And I went past there this morning and I see it's reappearing again. Oh, right. So, uh, all the path is sinking down. Oh. Um, about 10 to 12 foot wide. So, I go, where, is the, where there's a sinkhole. Whereabouts is this exactly, Peter? It's, it's in walking distance of the hole that's the, it's in Emerald at the moment. It's oh. in High Street Green. Oh, no. And that's uh, by, the, by the side of the water tower. Yeah. How, that, was, how, so it's about, how big is it, would you say? Well, it's, the hole hasn't appeared as such, but all the path is sunk down about a foot or more. Oh. Gone down like a big slope, you know? Oh, dear. And took all the curbs with it. Yeah. And uh, I say so I backfilled that about eight nine years ago plus. Yeah. And just with hardcore, and I say it's all gone again. I noticed it this morning. Oh dear. Well, Peter, listen. Thank you very much for that. If anybody um, has uh, any more information on that or has seen that and can verify Peter's sighting, then do give us a call. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number. Now, one of the stories we've been talking about this morning is uh, the school, a Bedfordshire school, which has sent parents a letter asking them to pay extra towards their children's education. Arnold Academy in Barton says the contributions of £20 per pupil up to a maximum of £40 would be voluntary. It blames changes in the way schools are now financed for the decision to appeal for more money. Well, Timothy Ramsden is the teaching union, the uh, from the teaching union, the National Association of Schoolmasters, Union of Women Teachers, National Executive Member for Beds, Hearts and Luton. Morning, Timothy. Thanks for coming in this morning. That's fine. Hello, Lee. Uh, now, Ian, what's, sorry. Uh, that's, uh, don't you worry about that, as, as long as it's uh, not something ruder. What's your reaction to this request by the Arnold Academy for extra contribution from parents? Well, first of all, I'm not surprised. Secondly, they're not the only school that's doing it. And thirdly, it's a disgrace. Why Why are you not dis- not surprised by this? Because stories are coming in from around the country. Um, very quick look up last night. Uh, there's a school in Otley in Yorkshire which has decided to buy iPods but charge the parents, so that's £360 uh, for IT equipment, which apparently is very soon going to be out of date, the models they bought. But we've got other stories. Sometimes it's not just make a donation. Sometimes it, you have to have this uniform and it costs a lot of money and uh, of course the difficulty is if you've got parents who can't afford it then they might start saying well does that does that school want my son or daughter i'm not saying that's the case with no no of course of course Uh, but that 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 is the case and we've got a a fear that some schools are using charges Mm. uh, as, as a method of selection and of course the reason they're doing that is because the general impression is if we get wealthy parents who are willing to pay it's quite likely we'll have well motivated young people who'll improve our exam results and improve our place in the published league tables so there's a whole sort of uh story here about what a school's for and who a school's for. And is that why you think it's a disgrace that the, these, these calls are being made? No, it's not, actually. I mean, I think, I think that that motive is not Arnold's motive, by the way, because they would be charging a lot more than £20 if yeah. they wanted to. No, I think it's a disgrace because schools were sold the idea of becoming academies. And in central Bedford, the local authority was selling it as much as anybody else, but the government has been, still is, around the country. And the idea was that you will then get more money because you won't get a portion of your money going to the local authority who will soak it up in providing services. You'll be able to choose what services you want, pay for them. And schools have gone along with that, and of course there isn't the money. Uh, For example, you might hear that there's a pay rise, 1% pay rise. That's not being funded. The schools have got to find out of existing money. And so they're looking around and they're coming up with this idea of let's charge. And this sounds to me one of the milder examples. Mm. But I do wonder about the word voluntary. If everybody gets a letter... Have you been sent a letter from the school about a voluntary donation? Yeah, well, I'm fault of sending so much. Oh, well, we were going to send so much. And somebody else said, well, you know, frankly, we've just been made unemployed. We can't afford it. Um, and it breaks away. It's like when with charges within the NHS, not the traditional prescription charges, etc. When you start charging, it chips away at the principle of my child goes to that school, I go to that doctor, I get what I need, my child gets what they need, and there's no question of 
payment mm. of money being any, anywhere involved. And I think it is a disgrace because it's chipping away at that system. We had a message on Facebook from one yeah. of the parents, yeah. uh, Julia, who's a parent uh, of a child at Arnold Academy, uh, and she basically says it's a good idea. She, she says she's happy to pay, to pay in a lump sum rather than attend fundraising events. And she says of the headmaster, Mr Kelly, he's um, made some really positive changes. I hope he gets lots of contributions so the Academy can expand the educational opportunities further. Right. And, of course, it's true that there have often been... When I started teaching in the 1970s, and we used to ask each term if people would make a contribution. But it's when you start getting a new system saying we want voluntary contribution, we suggest the amount that you send, and that is very nice for some parents who will say, good, it helps my child, etc., etc. But... It's not so good for the parents who find it difficult to afford. Mm. And there will be some people who say, £20? What's £20? £20 a year, £20 a term. There are some people for whom that's a lot of money. Yeah, of course. And, of course, it's £20. I was told last night when you rang me about coming on here, now you say it's £20 or going up to £40. It's £20 per child to a maximum of £40. £40, however many children you have there. Yeah. And... I'm still coming back to the principle. Now, if a school wants to fundraise, and if the way they fundraise is by asking for money, money, fine. Mm. But when it goes out as a blanket thing, it's effectively moving towards a situation where parents are being told, this is expected of you. We call it voluntary, but it is expected of you. Nothing's going to, no child's not going to be sent away from the school if they don't pay, mm. if you don't pay. But you know how children talk at school. Mm. And if it becomes, oh, you know... What do you say? Oh, my parents couldn't afford it. Mm. Uh, or, well, my parents don't like it. Oh, my parents don't bother because it buys it. And then what happens if you get some of the parents saying, well, if the equipment we've bought, the facilities we've bought, aren't usable by everybody all at once, well, we paid, so we should have, my child should have... It, it, I'm not saying every parent, and certainly not the one you've read out, she didn't say anything like that. It starts to bring in a principle whereby the ability to pay can affect, A, which school somebody goes to, and B, uh, what sort of status they have within the school. Now, it's very, very mild here, and I'm not criticising the, the head individually, but I do think it's a disgrace to the system. Uh, the, sc- the school should be funded properly in uh, the first place. And do you think... You say, I mean, £20, as you're saying, is, 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 is not the greatest compared to some of the other That's stories. Right. Are you worried, though, that this could be the sign of a developing trend? Absolutely. And when I say disgrace, that's what I mean. Mm. Because, really, the funding ought to be there at an adequate level, you can always have more. You can always have luxuries. You can have more trips. You can have uh, school holidays abroad, whatever. There are all sorts of things where it's fairly reasonable to ask for money. Though I have to say that the uh, system introduced by the uh, Secretary of State then in the 1980s was that if you have a school trip, every child has the right to go. Even if they can't afford it, you've got to find a way to... Mm. Uh, now, that seems to be examples I've had disappearing as well. And it's this idea that education is something you pay for. Now, in this case, it's, it's, a, it's a small amount. In other cases, it's a larger amount. But it starts to shift the whole attitude towards this is something you pay for rather than that this is a right your child has. And just as you can go to a doctor and you can be sent to refer to a hospital under the NHS. I know sometimes you have to wait, etc., etc., but I've just been involved myself with, 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 with the hospital. But you go and you've got no fear about, it's got, it's, what's it going to cost me? Will I be able to afford it? Can the credit card take it this month, etc., etc.? And the same with regard to education. There should be no question about the ability to pay. I mean, it's bad enough in terms of distinguishing between pupil and pupil when uh, we've got the free school meal issue because some mm. parents have said years and years and years in schools around the country, well, you know, it, it, I don't want my child having to go and say, I don't, I don't pay because I'm on free school meals because they feel, for no good reason, but this is obviously how young people feel, um, a, a, a bit ashamed about it. And they don't need to, but they do. And I think there is a problem here. And the question is, what is the response of... The government. If the mm. government says, well, that's all right, we don't need to fund you, we don't need to give you any more money, we don't need to give you as much as you might need, because you can always get it off of parents. Mm. And also, you go to two schools, one's in a very affluent area, they do it, £20. Another's in a more affluent area, £50. No problem, say, most parents. What about the school in an area where most people don't have any money spare and just putting clothes and shoes on the children to send them to school and feeding them? What happens then? Because the money isn't there for the schools generally. So Some those schools, schools are fundraising, suffer. others aren't. Yeah. 
And then you get some parents say, well, actually, I think we'll, we'll afford our £20 and go to a better school, uh, as they perceive it. And then you get a sort of divide between schools. So it's very device, potentially divisive too. <laughs> Timothy, it's a complicated one. I really appreciate your time and, uh, and help in explaining that for me. You're Thank you very much Thank for coming much. in. That's Thank Timothy you. Ramsden uh, from the N- NASUWT. 08459 455 555 is the phone number if you want to give us a call about that. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Right. Where was I? I was looking at the front pages of the newspapers. We only got to one, didn't we? The Guardian. May orders inquiry into police spies. And there's a picture of a dog. It's Cruft, isn't it? Cruft's the, uh, the old dog thing. Why, what, what's all this about showing animals? Hey, have you seen my scratches? you seen the scratches on my arm? Is that rabbits? Yeah. What were you doing to it? <laughs> I'm a meat eater now. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to catch the little so-and-so. Uh, the Independent. A uh, picture of Stephen Lawrence, an unprovoked murder. Farcically botched inquiry by a racist police force. Goes into the details that we heard uh, yesterday. The Times, you can't trust police. Damning verdict of Stephen Lawrence's mother as role of undercover officers is exposed. Oh, and look, there's also... Um, the Beth is on the front page as well. Widow's sperm win. When you put it like that, it's not, it's not quite such a... <laughs> Widow's sperm win? Hey, where do I buy a ticket for that? <laughs> Why wasn't I in that competition? Uh, let's have a quick look at the Express and the Mail and the Sun. Uh, we got a caller. I'm going to have to do the caller after the travel, I'm afraid, because uh, we won't have much time. Uh, Kate, I'll come to you after the travel, because I want to give you the time you deserve. Sorry. Daily Express, new fight to boost savings, and they're bringing back the Vicar of Dibley. The whole world buys a, b- breathes a collective s- sigh of what? The Daily Mail, lies, spies, cover-ups and corruption, sickening extent of Stephen's betrayal by the police is exposed. And the Sun has coverage of uh, Max Clifford, who is in court. 08459 four double five five double five. Kate in Kings Langley. I'll speak to you in a couple of minutes, but I've got to get the travel with Alice. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The A1 northbound is closed between the Sandy Roundabout and Bolnham because a horse box has broken down, but it's not causing any delays at the moment. Uh, in Hammer Hempstead, the A414 is closed at the M1 Junction 7 because of vehicles overturned. That is causing some delays around the area. Also in Chesant, the A10 southbound is slow going between Turnfold and Waltham Cross. The M25 anti-clockwise heavy going between Junction 17 for Maple Cross and 16 for the M40. Public transport has no reported problems. I'm Alice Glossop, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. Gosh, the weekend starts in 14 minutes. Isn't that exciting? It's 8.46, Friday the 7th of March. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. A woman from Newport Pagnell who won her case at the High Court to prevent the destruction of her late husband's frozen sperm now faces an anxious wait to see if the case goes to the Court of Appeal. The Point Cinema in Milton Keynes is to be knocked down. Councillors on the Development Control Committee voted last night for the landmark to be demolished. And in sport... Joe Root will miss England's 2020 matches against the West Indies after breaking his right thumb in Wednesday's one-day international win in Antigua. BBC Three Counties Radio, let's get the weather with Elizabeth Rizzini. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Elizabeth? 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 Kate? Yeah. You, you couldn't do the weather for me, could you? Elizabeth seems to have dropped <laughs> off. Oh, well, it's raining. <laughs> the, 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 excellent. Thank you, Kate. Elizabeth, where did you go? Hello. I don't know. Suddenly the volume went. Well, I've got to be honest. We just had Kate on from Kings Langley. She was, I mean, she was good. Can you beat <laughs> that? <laughs> yes. Go on. Away you go. What have you got? Not according to my radar, it's not. Uh, Certainly lots of cloud around. Uh, We are going to see a little bit of wet weather, I think, uh, mostly in the form of just outbreaks of light, patchy rain over the next couple of hours or so, and then things will brighten up quite nicely behind this weather front. So we can look forward to a much cheerier afternoon, some good spells of brightness, some sunshine emerging, temperatures on a par with what we saw yesterday. We could be up to 13 or even 14 degrees, 57 in Fahrenheit, perhaps even...
even some spots across Hertfordshire in particular getting a little bit higher than that. So, uh, so yeah, lovely end to the day. Overnight tonight, colder than last night. Temperatures down to three or four degrees Celsius, possibly, even in some of the towns. Uh, we'll see some clouds spread up from the south as we head into tomorrow morning. So a cloudy start to the weekend, but stick with it. It's going to be a lovely day again. Some good spells of sunshine by the afternoon. Staying dry all weekend and then Sunday, some glorious sunshine around temperatures well above where they should be for this time of year. We could be looking at 17 or even 18 degrees Celsius. That's the forecast. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. There's a great community spirit with uh, the people here. I like the parks, I love going around the parks. Inviting everyone to where you live. It's a great place to get out and about, go for a walk, you're so near to the countryside. And all this week, we're featuring Kempston. It's nice and compact, it has a little bit of everything in here. If you've got a story everyone should hear about, let us tell them about it. This is an old Anglo-Saxon burial site. Send us an email to 3cr at bbc.co.uk. Kempston is great. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Right, Kate, I'm sorry. It, it would appear you failed uh, the audition for Weather Girl. I'm sorry about uh, that. Uh, I, I never had any aspirations. Oh, anyway. I thought you were excellent, but Elizabeth <laughs> oh, Rizzini got all sniffy. Now, listen, she was better. She was, she was, <laughs> yeah, she was okay. You've called in about schools and funding and things, haven't yeah. you? What would you like to yeah. say, Kate? No, all it is is that um, our school, um, they, they call it a voluntary contribution, but, uh, like, I, I don't mean, like, these uh, lump sums, but um, for, I don't know, trips or other things. Um, but it's not. If you don't pay it, then the child just doesn't do the activity. Oh. End of. And um, I think it's... Uh, I, my, other, my other son went to another school that was a poorer school, and they really helped you out loads with money. They never, didn't expect any money, like, from you... If you couldn't afford it you couldn't afford it whereas this school is a much richer school and all they do is um try to get money out of the parents because they know the parents have got money how much and, money well, do they I ask haven't. well <laughs> not so. now how much money do they ask for kate well, it depends on the activity, but it can range from anything from, you know, £3.50 to £20 for whatever, you know, be it a coach trip or be it, um, you know, a, 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 a during school thing or, you know... I'm uh, trying something. to think back to my school. Was it, wasn't was it always the way, though? If you're going to a theatre trip or something, you had oh, to pay yeah. for it, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, with my other son's school, if you couldn't afford it, then they'd cover it over and they'd find a way for you to pay for it. Whereas with this, with, with, with this school, just bang, you just don't go. They call it voluntary. This is the thing. On the letters, they say, they, they call it a voluntary contribution, but then they sneak in at the bottom. They say, if, we, if you don't pay, then we probably won't be able to run the trip because we won't have enough money to do it. And and I think that's naughty. Either you pay for it and your child goes, or you don't pay for it. You, do, do you see what I mean? You don't call it a voluntary contribution. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, if you, if you don't pay it, then you don't go. I'd understand if they say it's a necessary contribution. Yes, they, they need to be perhaps a bit more honest. Kate, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, I had a text here. Where's that text gone? Um, my daughter's school asked... Pe- oh, sorry? My daughter's school asked parents to set up a direct debit for a monthly payment. It was voluntary. This was eight or nine years ago, says Mark in Bedford. What? Thank you for that. Uh, Now, good news, good news. Common sense has prevailed. People have pulled their heads out of their nostalgic backsides and made a decent decision. The point... Cinema in Milton Keynes is going to be ripped down. Justin, let's go over there and start it today, shall we? <laughs> Ian, I'm standing outside the point right now. I'm this sorry was, about uh, that. It was built back in 1985, the UK's first multiplex cinema. But um, looking at this building right now, not a lot has changed since 1985, to be brutally honest with you. Yep. And I'm sure that everyone will agree it looks a complete and utter mess. I drove past it about a month ago, and mm. I just thought it was embarrassing. You know, Milton yeah. Keynes is a... Uh, a, a, a I was going to say 
thrustling and bribing, but that's not it. Bustling and thriving town. I'm not going to call it a city. I'm sorry. Mm. I don't buy into that. But it's a great town with exciting things and great buildings and wonderful roads yeah. and all these things. And then you see that, you well, know, that mess. Well, in the distance, I can see the escape building, which, again, was probably like this was back in 1985. That was built in 2002. But that looks futuristic. It looks new. It looks fresh. Uh, and when you see the points here, yes, people have got their memories here. And a lot of people would like to, to keep this purely because of their memories, but unfortunately it has seen better days. It really has. Uh, now, we're talking about this because the councillors on the Development Control Committee last night voted for it, for it to be demolished. You've been talking to people this morning, haven't you? Yes, it's uh, going to be replaced by uh, a retail development. I've been uh, here in Milton Keynes asking people if they will miss the point. Here's what people had to say. Well, Brian, we're outside the point. You've heard us talking about this on the radio this morning. you come down to have your say. Are you going to miss it? I am, yeah. I've been here uh, over 20 years now, and um, I know it's always been there. When I first came to Milton Keynes, I thought, oh, what's this? And I was told it was a point, and... I, oh, yeah, I'm going to miss it. It's a, it's a landmark and it's a meeting place for a lot of people. Um, I meet a lot of people outside the point. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to miss it. Yeah. So it's the history you're going to miss more than anything else, not the facilities, the history here it's and the, what, what it stands for. What it stands for, is, it is a landmark for Milton Keynes. Everybody knows the point in central Milton Keynes. No matter where you go, you mention Milton Keynes. Or do you live near the point? Mm. Yeah, I do, you know, so or I used to. But, yeah, I, I, people know it's there. It's a landmark. It's a specific landmark. You said the point outside Mil- in Milton Keynes. Oh, yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's, it's a shame it's going to go. Well, Kim, as we look at the point here, can you just try and describe that to our listeners? Um, it's very tired looking. Um, it needs a, a bit of TLC. It needs a lick of paint. And I think that would then, you know, make it not look quite as bad as it does. And it's going. You've got memories of coming to the bar here, going to the cinema. Will you miss the point in Milton Keynes? Probably not. Raj, here we have the point. Looks a bit tatty. Yeah. But uh, will you be sad to see it go? Um, yeah, I will do. But I think um, it could do with a bit of tidying up, though. Yeah. Yeah. More than a bit of tidying up, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to, like, all the other places, it looks a bit out of shape. So I mean, if right. you had the choice, though, where would you go? The point or the escape? Uh, escape. And that's Just, why it's going. Yeah, yeah. So because fair it's enough. had its day, hasn't it, really? Yeah. It looks like it, definitely, yeah. Well, Pauline, you've been following this story with interest. Now you know the point is going to be demolished. Do you really care? Yes, yes. Tell us why you care so much. Well, because I remember it going up, and it's a landmark, and I think they should um, do, do something else with it inside without pulling it down. When was the last time you used it, though? Oh, long time. That's what I did say earlier, mm. yeah. People, um, the, the mixed reactions, but this is what Milton Keynes is so good at doing, Justin, mm. is, is, is rebuilding and moving on and, and, and moving forward. Absolutely. P- people saying, you know, they, that they love looking at this because they, they've got their memories of coming here and seeing it. You can see it for, for miles and miles. It was iconic. Yes, it is a landmark, but, but things do move on. But in saying that, Ian, I live in Hemel Hempstead. Now, the Kodak so, building... Yes, I do. So what? Uh, well, I'm just saying. Well, what are you uh, telling me? The Kodak building... <laughs> coming round, <laughs> however many times you ask me. The Kodak building there for local people, that's iconic. Now, when Kodak moved out, uh, the building wasn't knocked down. Now it's a, a huge block of flats. But, but the history there to a lot of people, they wanted to keep that because of the history. And that's the only reason, really, why people here want to keep this, because of their memories. Not because of what's here. There's currently a cinema here. There's, the, there's bingo here. There's a coffee shop and also careers advice. A lot of people I'm talking to, they're not using the facilities. They would like to keep Keep it just because it's the point. Sorry, Justin, that report may have been interrupted ever so slightly. What on earth is going on next door, girls? What? We're, we're... Uh, Justin is doing an excellent report on the point. And what are you doing? Singing? We're totally missing the point, sorry. We were just singing and dancing. We were rehearsing for our um, appearance on Pebble Mill. We have been, Justin, we have been caning Kath's posh coffee. Uh, there's no yeah. tomorrow. And I gotta, yeah, man. You know, yeah. She's bought, you know she's bought in some stronger stuff than the stuff we've been having. I know, I know. Hey, man. I, I, hey, hey, and I've got to say, Justin, yeah. I flipping love you, man. <laughs> I'm ser- no, seriously, I don't say this enough. I flipping love you. I love you too, man. Nicer, boy. man. Have a really good show tomorrow, yeah? And you, guys. Yeah? Yeah. Letters. Letters. He's such a nice bloke, isn't he? He's so lovely. He is, though. You just want to... You just want to give him a big hug. You know, and I, I don't, I don't ever, t- I don't ever even really thought about, I never even noticed it until today. He's just so lovely. Oh, what a nice guy! I'm so lucky to know him. Carol's in St Albans. Morning, Carol. Morning, Ian. What have you got for me? You're talking about car park knocks. Yeah, d- uh, dig and runs. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, it wasn't a hit and run. The other Tuesday, in the height of the gales, we parked the car in the car park. Oh, yeah. I had hold of the door, and as I was getting out, the wind took it. Oh, yeah. And took me with it. Oh, well, sorry, so, sorry, what t- The wind took you? Took the door. Yeah. And, and took me with it. Where I, to? I nearly ended up out of the car on my knees. But I did not let go of the door. The door tapped the wing mirror of the car next yes, to us. Yes, yes. Nothing, not a thing. She sat in her car and sat there and sat there. We checked the car door over, not a scratch, not a thing. We did our shopping and on our way out we were paged. Yeah, paged? Oh no! (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Anyway, we went. The car door, which was filthy, had finger rubs on it. Yes. She was obviously trying to find something. Yes. I I took photographs on my phone. I took four photographs. Not a thing, not a thing. Not even a mark on our car. We then get a phone call from her garage. If we care to pay cash, it'll be £750. Oh, no. No, but listen, if it goes through the insurance... It'll be £1,300. Cheeky little scoundrels. Now, to my calculations, and I'm not a maths boss, if he added VAT to the 750 it it'd be about £900. Yeah, oh dear. Not £600. G- Car- Carol, I've, I've got, listen, I, I've got to end it, because I can see Jonathan Vernon-Smith is giving me skunk eye from the studio next door. He wants to do his show. OK. Have a, have a lovely weekend. Thank you so much for that story. And we all wanted to hear the rest of it. It's JVS's fault we had to cut that one short. Sorry. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The A1 northbound still closed between the Sandy Roundabout and Bullnham because a horse bro- box has broken down. And on the speed sensors, the A5 is slow going in both directions between Houghton Regis and Dunstable. In Hemel Hempstead, the A414 is closed around junction M7 for the M1, sorry, because a vehicle was overturned. Public transport has no reported problems, though. I'm Alice Gloss at BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Alice. Have a nice weekend. That's it. That's your lot. There'll be a new podcast up around lunchtime today. Be on iTunes tomorrow. JVS is up next. Till Monday at six from me. Ta ta. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to the JBS Show. I'm Jonathan Vernon-Smith. It's Friday, it's nine o'clock. And on today's big phone-in, do you trust the police? It's on virtually every front page this morning. Dory.